What you mean away? It's fine. Start the stream, please. <laughs> We're just started. There's just so much. There's just so much going on, bro. It's like ridiculous. Anyway, oh, we're live. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Where are the real eaters at? We are back. <laughs> Someone said late by two seconds. I think we're early by about fifteen seconds, actually. Y'all got it. <laughs> Check and have it today. I'm not. I'm not arguing with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how y'all doing everybody everyone's coming in still spamming up late i know y'all can see us but whatever <laughs> someone said where's money back kevin i'm sure he'll be here shortly he n never misses a stream is he on vacation <laughs> still or did he just get back? He's back who knows he's back he's back okay yeah. got it <laughs> yeah. well, let everybody get in as you guys see about today's title we're gonna go through every single nba prediction from the start of the year that we got right and then we got wrong so talk about all our big swings and misses, the bold predictions we got right, where we're ahead of the curve on, all of that. Before we get to that, what, what, what has been in y'all's mind this week, NBA-wise, since the last time we spoke? A lot of shit happened. Embiid's back tonight. Um, he's, he's ducking Shay and J-Dub, you know, <laughs> re regular Embiid stuff, which is kind of, which is kind of funny. Uh, I, think, I think the Suns are about to fall into the plane race. I think I've been I've been thinking about that a lot over the last like 24 hours and looking at their schedule. I don't I don't know if they're going to make it into the playoffs, which would be an really? interesting development. Yeah. That would be a travesty. Yeah. That would be hilarious. That's what that would be. That would be one of the biggest fucking failures in NBA history. It would be absolutely hilarious, especially given the fact that the last time we saw Kevin Durant have a super team, it was also one of the biggest failures in NBA history. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, damn, KD, you got a track record <laughs> from hell. Holy it shit. would be hilarious. I don't know. I'm not necessarily preying on their downfall, but I wouldn't uh, be sad about it. I'll say that. It's just like, bro. Nah, I hate the Suns. <laughs> if they were I, I don't, I just, I just don't, I don't. I don't want good things for them. They're Why do you hate the Suns? I mean, who's, who's the leader of their team? Devin Booker, but what's wrong with him? That's that's not it. It's it's Kevin Durant. Oh. <laughs> it's it's just that. listen. It's residual hate, right? From 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 Kevin Durant. It really has nothing to do with the Suns, because um, like the whole era of the Suns that was kind of corny, like the winners work type of stuff. That's mm -hmm. all gone. Like this is a completely new iteration of the team. I just can't get over them and that insane game game seven loss, and the visual of like. DeAndre Ayton doing pull-ups after after a win. Like, it's just... It was work, baby. <laughs> Shut up. Shout cool. out to the early donos. Elena tip $3. Said, late as always. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> Shout, Shout out to Matthew. Tip for $25. The last, two weeks, the last two weeks, we've been early. And we've actually been on time. So I don't want to hear anybody talking about late. We've been doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Matthew for tipping $25. Said, and so convenes the council of three, the glazer, the hater, and the man knower. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> man, How do you feel about that, man? You are now our resident man knower. I'd rather be a man knower than a glazer. Glazer's 10 times worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just informed. That's all that tells me. <laughs> I have a lot of information in this goddamn dome. But Glazy, never me, man. <laughs> Some of the comments, Benjamin Garcia said, what are we doing for the 500K special? I don't know. What, what, what are we doing for the 500K special, y'all? 500K special. Woo. I mean, what are we at right now? Like 470 something? Something like that, yeah. We got to do something special. I didn't, We got to actually think, talk about that and think about that. You guys I in the chat have it. to spam ideas. You thought about it? <laughs> no, so I haven't even thought about it. Yeah, same. We actually have to do something. That's crazy. Chat, what do you guys want us to do? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of Luka talk in the chat right now. Listen, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. There's a lot of Ooh. Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic are heavy on my mind as of late. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about them later in the stream. Yeah, there's so much going on, bro. Yeah. There's so Before much we get to the news stories, uh, shout out to Louis King for tipping $2. He said, coming in with the deuce to keep y'all humble. Been one of my many 50 donos in my opinion. I've oh, been one too many fifty dollar donos in my opinion. Just remember where y'all came from, especially you, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, speaking of where I came from, I got reminded. I got reminded where I came from today. I'm over here chilling, just doing regular work, podcast stuff, or whatever. Like two hours ago, I'm outside. I hear screaming. 
leave me alone, leave me alone. I snapped my neck. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I I can hear this because every every time I'm in my living room, I leave the window to slightly crack because I like a fresh breeze. Breeze. And so I go outside or I stick my head out my window and I see there's this dude running around getting chased around with some dude on a bike. And all of a sudden, Crown Eaters, if you're 18 and below or 18, if you're not 18, please mute right now. Dude pulls down his pants it starts going crazy in the All middle. All right, next story. You are and I'm like, what all those people? What is going on, bro? I swear, it was crazy. Okay, anyways, let's get to the news stories. <laughs> Craziest shit, bro. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? First story I care what about, you mean. First news story to talk about today. Joel Embiid is back, y'all. He is playing the Oklahoma City Thunder for the first time in I don't know how many games since he was tearing the NBA apart, having one of the greatest scoring seasons of all time before tearing his meniscus. Now he's back. How are y'all feeling about this? It's looking potentially scary out east because um, I didn't think he was going to be back this soon. And even though we're like two weeks away from the playoffs, I still think that this is like kind of best case scenario because I thought that if he was going to come back at all, it was going to be maybe like a week from now and his first like within his first five games, they were going to have to play in the play-in. This is this is massive because mm-hmm. if he can le- actually get his legs under him and you know be kind of be kind of ready, let me pull up the standings for the Eastern Conference right now. Mm-hmm. They are the current seven, they're the eighth seed. They would play Miami. That would be an interesting matchup to see. And also, Embiid fresh off of an injury. If he knocks out the playoff risers, Miami Heat, you, you get some legacy points for that. You get <laughs> for some being legacy points. points? Legacy points for winning a playing game? Get the fuck out of I'm my not, face. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. We have That's to start so up, nasty. We have to start bigging up the, the playing game. Like for real. No, for right? sure. It's does, cool. Does it count? Does it count? Does it not count? How do we feel about this? No, it's cool, but Embiid's above that. Embiid has a bigger legacy stuff at play than a playing game. That's the bare minimum legacy for someone who's a top three player. Injury. Off of injury, off of a meniscus. You think outside of that MVP, that would be his biggest accomplishment, Donovan? 100%. <laughs> Wow. 100. Now, I'm not saying that his legacy would be great because of it. You mm-hmm. still have holes, but you get some points, right? You get some brownie points for that. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're playing right now. We're missing the game, obviously, because we're, we're streaming. So we'll, we'll have to watch it, and we'll talk about it on the pod episode this week once we have time to go back and watch. But, you know, they played 75 games so far. What is that? He has uh, seven games to get under his belt to knock that rust off before coming into the play-in. That's a decent amount of runway to get your to get you know your feet wet again and get back to being close to what you were before. Makes them a lot more interesting in the playoffs because I, I think that's enough games that we'll probably see an approximation of what we saw early in the season. Yeah. Also, the last seven games, Joel Embiid's special, right? Mm. The 76ers have the easiest schedule in the in the league for the next seven games. They have they have games against the Pistons, the Spurs, the Grizzlies, and the Nets. This is exactly what you want Joel Embiid to. Oh to my see. God, he's gonna tear this fucking schedule apart. He's playing this is the perfect runway for he Joel plays Embiid. Chet tonight. Get going again. Has to do with Bam on Thursday. That's not, obviously not easy. But then game. he deals against the Grizzlies. He's gonna tear Jaren up. He, we saw who he did to Wemby last time. The Pistons. Oh my God, there is no centers outside of Bam here on Thursday that are really gonna be able to slow him down and keep him out of rhythm. He's eating. Wow. That's tough, bro. I mean, <clears throat> this is the best case scenario for Joel Embiid, so we can get, you know, his legs right back under him and start get, getting into or try to get to peak Joel Embiid that we saw earlier this season, bro. He's got eight points in nine minutes right now. <laughs> Starting off pretty hard. That's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> First game back, it's terrorizing. We'll see. Well, listen, chat. While while this game is on, while the stream is on, y'all watch the game. Obviously, I'll have it pulled up on the side. But we can't really lock in. Let's keep track of what his first game back is like live. It should, should be Keep interesting. Us updated chat. And while you guys are doing that, also leave a like on the stream. There's over 450 people watching, but we barely have a hundred likes on the stream. Shame on you watching right now. Leave a like on the stream. <laughs> leave a like on the stream. Leave a like on the stream. Let's get back to some donos real quick. Shout out yeah. to Matthew for tipping five dollars. He said, looking at the top two players in the league, the house Bill Russell built is currently getting gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> These white men are unstoppable. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, uh, how y'all feeling about that? Rest in peace, Bill Russell, man. 
This is the Eastern yeah. European <laughs> League now. <laughs> Get ready to speak Slovenian. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a uh, behind closed doors conversation. You know what I'm <laughs> this isn't a conversation I want to have with you guys right now. I Shout mean, out look, to dude. Discon T for tipping five dollars. The boys are back in town. Shout out to Ferris for tipping ten dollars. He said two K one v one for five hundred K. It wouldn't be fun, y'all. It would be, it would be too easy. It'd just be me smacking them. Who won the last time when we played, Isaac? Tell him. <laughs> he said one v one. So like, yeah, like one on one. Two K. Yeah. Who won last time when I played you? Did we? Didn't we play one on ones? No. Well, we did five v five. Oh, I smacked you in 5v5. I'll smack you in 1v5. No, you didn't. <laughs> so, Elena tip $2 sure did, said, <laughs> the Wolves can't complete their back-to-back-to-back playing championships because we actually clinched the playoff spot. Yep, shout out to Tim Wolves for getting out of the play no longer playing merchants. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, That's one of my favorite videos of like NBA Twitter of all time. The, yeah. the edit of like Patrick Beverly crying. <laughs> Setting up on the fucking yeah. scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is something to him, man. All right, let's, let's keep going with the new stories for the day. Uh, currently, the NBA has updated their MVP ladder, which I think is really designed for discourse to get people talking about people updating the MVP ladder. I think it's all it's for on the NBA's part. But, you know, they put Luka Doncic at two over Shea Gildas Alexander. Something we've been talking about a lot, that Luka Doncic is making this late MVP push. They're rising up the standings. I think they're currently the five seed. But it's, you know, give or take every day. They could fall to six in one night. Who knows? But they're, they're in that mix. Can get as high as four if the Clippers don't get their shit together. It seems a lot of people are starting to realize that Luka is at the minimum in the top two conversation. There's a growing growing momentum for people saying, let's give it to him. Team success isn't this end-all, be-all, yada, yada, yada. We talked about it at length last stream. We were all on the same page that it should be Nikola Jokic still for the whole season totality. You know, both great statistical profiles. One's the one seed, one's not <clears throat> type shit. Do you still feel that way? Uh, that it should be Jokic for MVP? Yes. Yes. I still think that I still think Jokic should be MVP. Um, I think it's very clear on a night to night basis that he is the best in, in the league. The Nuggets have not done anything outside of win games. They're probably gonna be the, the one seed out west. Like how do you how do how do you not give it to him outside of just like wow, these numbers are big for, for mm. Luca? Yeah. People are really wow by the points per game difference. That's kind of the main talking point. Is that plus Luca's doing more doing he has less help, obviously. Very injured team. A lot, lot more on his shoulders from team stamp, team perspective. Which I guess I understand. I think a lot of that is because it looks easier. And the team around Jokic looks better because Jokic is so great at elevating people. But he does have, you know, he has the consistency of his people around him. Better health than the Mavericks have had. And obviously the counting stats are on Luka's side. Averaging 34, 10, and 10 is ridiculous. <clears throat> I don't know. What do you stand, Mo? No, yeah, I'm 100%. Like, this belongs to... Jokic, he has all around the best argument for it. Obviously, like you guys said, talent is ridiculous, is obviously there. Universally, I feel like he's known by now, or at least he should be known, the best player in the world. Um, and then, you know, like standing wise, too, the winning is there. So, all around, he probably has, he definitely has the strongest argument. But I have a question for you guys. Seems like everyone now has gotten over uh, SGA's MVP push. Why is that to you guys? I think it's more about Luka rising than Shea falling. Shea's been hurt as of late, so he's slowed down a little bit individually. But it's much more about Luka just having one of the most ridiculous, you know, box score seasons we've ever fucking seen. And him just having that big momentum of the team being really improved in the second half and getting all this attention. Like, I tweeted yesterday that I think they're probably going to make the conference finals if it shakes out that way. I think they might be the second best team in the conference. That hype is really carrying Luka right now. Yeah, Mm. I, I agree. I agree. He hasn't he hasn't done anything. I think also Shay's Shay's been amazing, but he has also been like what Shay has been what everybody wanted Jason Tatum to be in terms of like you score 30, best player, best team, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Where you look at Luca and like Isaac said, his team is rising. He's averaging like 34 a night. Right? Ridiculous. And has and is is like doubling up Shea mm-hmm. in rebounds, assists, that that type of stuff. So that's that's really where his push comes from. Yeah, I think a lot of people are also realizing that Luca is just in another stratosphere when it comes to the best of the best in the NBA. Like obviously Shea is like one of the best 
three, four, five people at his position. Whatever you want to, whatever way you want to slice it, just know that he's the best. But Luca is in rare air. Air that's like people put him in all time talks right now. That's the type of season yeah. that he's having. And all and those I shades, think... like, mm-hmm. go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, like, all those shades having, like, to his own right and a historic season in some ways, what Luca's doing is truly, like, generational and it's things that we haven't seen before done at consistently high level yeah i think a lot of people are at the point where i see a lot of common talking points that it'll feel weird years on the line to look at lucas stat line and what he did with this team guiding them to this height with the iffy talent around him people will sit keep saying it'll look weird years on the line to be like he wasn't the mvp right it'll feel like he got robbed in the future which I, I get. I understand that. Luke, Jokic is the boring pick. Luka's done such an amazing thing this year. Such a No, he's gotten better, right? Everything across the board, we said for years. Can he play next to star talent? What happens if his three-point yeah. shot finally falls? All those boxes have been checked this year, and we're seeing, like, peak Luka. Donovan, you always talk about every year coming to the season, people say, is you Luka's year win MVP if this happens and this happens and that happens? Yeah. It's basically all happened this year. So people were like, what more do you need, right? The, people keep saying, the bar keeps changing. First it was... Best team, then it was team doesn't matter with Russell Westbrook and, and Jokic in 2022. The, you know, the standards keep changing. You're just trying to find reasons to not give it to Luka. All this stuff. And people just feel like it's his time. Also, let's not forget, they got Kyrie Irving and got worse last year. So, like, oh last so like so you, you have that, like, I'm just saying, like, in years past, mm-hmm. why stuff hasn't necessarily gone his way is because you got an, inf- an influx of, of talent, uh, or at least star talent. And you missed the play in last year, right? They were actively tanking. And so I do think that <laughs> yeah, last year. That's crazy. For, for this year, yeah, it it looks nice. And I think finally we got Luca to put everything together. I do think that the argument, though, of we're going to look back and it's going to look weird, so we should give it to him now, I do think that that's a stupid argument because <laughs> – it disregards everything that's happening now, right? Like a lot of the arguments that you go back and like when you look at box scores and stuff like that, it's like, oh, how did how did this happen? How did these people go this? And it's like, well, you you weren't there. Like you had you had to actually like watch what was going on on a, on a daily basis. And if you are watching Jokic night in and night out and seeing everything that he's doing, you can understand. Oh, this guy is he is the MVP. And although Luca's numbers say that he is by far and away like the best player, the most impactful player, whatever, you have to watch these games to see why it's yeah. not him. Yeah, I'm at the point. I won't be upset if Luca wins it at all. I still expect most voters will go with Jokic, but I understand the case for Luca, and I don't think it'd be crazy if he won. Like I'd be fine with it. You know, it wouldn't be like mm-hmm. high rate robbery. Yeah, but something honestly, that. Go ahead. One thing, last one, last thing I wanted to say when it comes to Luca, I uh, something that I appreciate a lot that's just not talked about enough. I feel like is the leap that he's made when it comes to his shooting. Yeah, a lot more off the dribble, or not off the dribble, off the ball than we're used to. And also, he's just genuinely become a better shooter. Like this season, he's shooting what seventy eight percent from the free throw line. Before that, he's just been known to. Like, 78% is, like, not fantastic, but it's, like, pretty much close to average in the NBA, you know? And so, and before that, he was, like, 71%, 73%, 74%, you know? And just seeing all these numbers rise, including his three-point numbers, too, getting up, like, 10 attempts per game, which are tough, which is tough to do, shooting at 38% is just ridiculous. Yeah, he's currently at non-corner threes this year, 39%. Corner threes are still terrible, but he's only took 25 on the whole year, so that's irrelevant. But yeah, overall, 39% from three for the season. Previously, his career high was 36%. And if you look yeah. at the volume of threes he's taking, it is up to 39% of his total shots come from three. Previously, that was 32%. So an extra 7% of his shots coming from three, which may not seem like a lot, but it's a pretty good amount. And for that to happen with your percentages getting better, truly it's ludicrous tough. shooting season. Tough. Next yeah, level, and, bro. And he's also shoots 76% at the rim. Y'all see this 100 right here next to that number? That's 100 percentile. That means it's the highest in the league for obviously for a point guard because he's listed as that. This is the yeah. same percentage that LeBron James shot in 2012. That yeah, is that's ridiculous. disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> he's an absurd player that does not make sense. Like, it's ridiculous. But anyways, wow. we, we, we move on to the next story here. We'll see what happens to the MVP race. It's clearly competitive. The two white boys duking it out. But in other news, 
Paul Pierce, back on his bullshit. He's, he calls out Rudy Gobert. Nobody considers European players tough, especially from France. The latest former player going on to TV or whatever and just <laughs> yapping. How do y'all feel about Paul Pierce's media presence? I wonder if he said this. Yeah. First off, I wonder if he said this. Oh, my God. He said this on Undisputed. On Undisputed. That show's already in the dumps, in the waters. It's true dog water, bro. And to have someone like Paul Pierce to try to save your show is just all down bad for reasons like this, bro. But now he's just yap flapping his gums. This is that's, this is all it is, bro. Like, what he's saying just genuinely doesn't make any sense. <laughs> flapping his gums I mean, is the I, best way to put it. I don't even want, want to talk about this. This is just... <laughs> you're just old and racist, like... <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do you mean, bro? Yeah. What not, is not, it? Not, not racist. That that's the that's the wrong word. But you understand what I'm trying to say. It's, it's uh, dumb, unfunny, uninteresting, yeah. uninsightful. Yeah. All the all the the whole bunch. What do these old players like? Gilbert Arenas a couple weeks ago, he said some shit like, "Oh, we need to get the Euros out of here," or some crazy shit like that. What do these old players have against like foreign? Because that was the narrative. That was the narrative around European players when they played. And so they mm. haven't taken into account the fact that like things change, you know, and so they are still rocking with the same ideas that they were in 2004 and they're bringing it into 2024. And it's like, what do you mean? Yeah. Nobody considers European players. Every, there's so many, there's so many other players that like people do consider tough and it's just, it's a wrong statement. Who gives a fuck it's, who's tough? Exactly. Like it's, it's Why a, are we talking about? I mean, this? I mean, we listen, listen. We should care who's tough, but to call out an entire like continent and be like, "Yeah, they're not tough." Like you're, you're lying. You're, you're just showing that you're not paying attention, and it's just, it's dumb. If you're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves, which I'm assuming was the point of this conversation, mm -hmm. and you're like, "I don't think Gobert's tough." Like, who gives a fuck if he's tough? Like, what, what, what are we even talking about? They're not gonna box out there. Like, that's. that's, that's, that's I mean, do you have the dog in you or not? Matter. Do you have the dog in you or not? <laughs> What does the dog and you mean? That's tough. That's that's what I'm saying. That's that's toughness. Mm -hmm. We're going into the playoffs. Life on the line. We're going into war every other night. Are you gonna stand behind your brother in I battle say that. or not? Does your brother got your back? Can you trust him to come over Let the top? <laughs> it's like he it's like he expects someone. Now when you talk like that, it's like damn, where you want me to pull out a fucking ratchet from my back and slash an opponent's leg or what? Like <laughs> It's just basketball. <laughs> if you are not prepared to do that, don't be on my team. See, Ben Wallace, <laughs> ben Wallace brass knuckles. He would have came out with it. He wouldn't have been playing fair. Juan Artest would have shot somebody if it meant they, they could go to the next round. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I need on my team. Steel chair. <laughs> Steel chair. Yeah, movies. man. Paul Pierce is very uninteresting as a media member. It's... This is so funny because there's so many insightful former players that do good stuff, and then you just get every now and then you just get one of these that are just like the opposite. <laughs> they're just there because they're a former player and are carried by their cachet. Yeah, exactly. Right. On a more positive note, Rajon Rondo is retiring, and everybody is taking the moment to appreciate his career. Good. What a career for Rajon Rondo. He has a super interesting career. First and foremost, is Rajon Rondo a Hall of Famer? Uh, I think he's a four-time All-Star. He's led the league in assists twice. He has a he's ring. A champion. Two rings. Two. Oh yeah, two. Yeah, one where he was like you know like one of a starter and one a very important piece. Well, no, he was a part for the Lakers. Let me not diminish that. But yeah, yeah. fringe. I don't know. It'll four take. So he's not first ballot. It'll mm. take him a couple years. Yeah, he'll probably like, get. It, him. It, it, yeah, I don't. I don't know how many years you can be on the ballot before you get knocked off. Um, I think you can do it for like over five years. There is and no. I don't think you get knocked off. Sometimes they bring oh, people in there that retired like forty years ago. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Okay. See another reason why the basketball hall of fame is crazy. Kind of like, but like <laughs> forty years is crazy as fuck, bro. At that point, they, yeah, I know they do that in the NFL Hall of Fame where it's like. After like a certain amount of years, it's like, listen, buddy, nobody's voting you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm does the same thing. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely fringe, but I think I think he could get in. Four All Stars let's is look, just enough. Like he's very similar to Andre Iguodala. Reference page. Yeah, he's very similar to an Andre Iguodala, but he has four All Stars instead of uh, one. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because like four time All Star, four time All Star, three time Assist Champ, two time Champion. 
four-time all-defensive team. He has an all-NBA uh, selection, steals champ, two-time champion. Like now, and obviously this isn't like indicative of his entire career, but you're averaging a triple single, my guy. <laughs> yeah. Are no. you a Hall of Famer? Fringe. Like He's said, special fringe. in his own right. I know. He's yeah. special in his own right. <laughs> he he literally is, bro. Like his archetype is so rare. <laughs> it sounds like a make a wish. Like, no, it's not like that. But truly, like looking at he's special when it comes to like the type of player that he is, because usually like He's, he's so cerebral, and he's one of the. Yeah, he is. You don't think he is? No, I'm saying I'm looking at this page right now. Oh, he's not. He's not. Re- really? I mean, he has. So he has like a seven year span where all of his accomplishments happen, and then the moment that he gets traded, yeah, from Boston to Sacramento, it just goes. It's a revolving door of teams, and the play in terms of like games played. First three years, kind of good, 68, 72, 69, whatever. And it's just not super, super impactful from what it looks like. However, but when he's on he the go, court, he goes, like he goes to Chicago, they go to the playoffs. Yeah, New Orleans, exactly. they go to the playoffs. Like, yeah, like in New Orleans, he was truly hard. like a – he was one of the most important pieces and he helped He'll the DeMarcus Cousins and, and uh, AD thing like help coexist and really work at high levels. Of course, we we know what happened back in 2016, even, 2017 NBA season when he uh, when they went against the Boston Celtics in the first round and damn near upset the first seed Celtics. Very impressive, you know. And then you know what he did with the Lakers as well, coming off the bench was impressive too. Sounds like you got some. some sounds like you looks like you have something nasty to say, Isaac. What do you have? I to love say? the I love the revisionism we have with the AD and and Boogie thing. On how it, they reached high levels, like they didn't do anything for New and Orleans. As as, that's high levels, bro. As soon as Boogie got hurt, they got better. They were on a better pace and had a better offensive rating when he was out. Like that team was cool and interesting for those twenty games, but they, hadn't they figured didn't it do out anything. Yet. <laughs> Maybe they would have figured it out. Who knows? But like they didn't do a fucking thing together. <laughs> Back to Rondo, though. I will say real quick, Rondo. Not on this is my final take. Rajon Rondo will be a Hall of Famer, and I know that because people are talking about putting Kyle Lowry in the Hall of Fame. And so because of that, Rajon Rondo will go into the Hall of Fame. Lowry's definitely had a better career than him. You would rather have Kyle Lowry's career over Rondo's Easy. Yes, easy. I mean, Rondo just has has Celtics clout. I don't think he... Yeah. Yeah, Think of Rajon Rondo as a player. Where does Kyle Lowry have clout? What do you mean? Who gives a fuck about clout? What do you mean? You said you said Rondo only has Celtics clout. Like that's and why I he's said, viewed as much better because he has a Celtics aura. While mm. if no, you put things I'm, side by side objectively, Kyle Lowry's career is just as good, if not better. They both have one All NBA selection. Kyle Lowry has two more All Stars, and then he has the the champion. Yeah, so would pretty you, similar. You would rather be Kyle Lowry than yes, Rajon Rondo. Why? Rondo, av- he's a key. For his career, he put up nine points. So much Rondo talk. Sixty <laughs> percent from the free throw line, and he's like a thirty percent three point shooter. Like in the NBA today, obviously, like someone like him would figure out to survive, but he's not like he's not a glorified archetype whatsoever. And re- we move on <laughs> real quick. The revision is history, and <laughs> y- y'all, y'all gonna make me the revision is history. <laughs> is crazy. It is crazy. Everybody just forgot that for the first like five to six, seven playoff runs of Kyle Lowry's career, and specifically the ones in Toronto, <laughs> him and DeMar DeRozan choked every single year they were there. Kawhi comes in, saves the entire country, and now everybody's like, oh yeah, Kyle Lowry, like, oh wow, he's great. We forget that whole entire part of Kyle Lowry's thing. No, you just think that we, like, care. Like, obviously, he wasn't good enough to be, like, the best player on his team, and nor is DeMar DeRozan, so they couldn't beat LeBron, couldn't beat the other good teams out there. Rajon Rondo was the fucking fourth option on his team. It's and not comparison, also, like... I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not talk, I'm not talking about Lowry versus Rondo in this okay. sense. All I'm talking about is Kyle Lowry and, and the way that his entire career is viewed. And I'm saying that Kawhi and Kawhi showing up and putting that team on his back and having a legendary playoff run has helped the the entire vision of Lowry's entire career 
Yeah, because it's the not, one not, time not, he not had a good enough team. Huh? It's the one time he was put in a proper role with a proper star next to him that could win it. That's more about DeMar DeRozan than it is Lowry, I think. Lowry you was were far the one, from the issue. You're the one who's been saying that Kyle Lowry was the best player on that team the entire time. Yes, he was. Correct. He didn't have a running mate good enough to make some shit happen until he got Kawhi. He was out here. <laughs> if you, are going, you can't say, okay, he's the best player and also not acknowledge the fact that he was also out here choking. I okay. You say choking. I didn't have high expectations for a team led by Kyle Lowry as a first option. He shouldn't have been the best player on the team, is what I'm saying. He was finally put in the proper role as the facilitator, second best player next to a superstar. That's where he can thrive, and it's the first time we ever saw him in a team construction that was actually possible to win with. And that is my entire point: is that throughout this entire time, everybody knew Kyle Lowry wasn't that good, and now Nobody's, after Kawhi, you're arguing the point I was making. Show, and then after Kawhi shows up, everybody goes back. <laughs> to all of those years and just be like oh no like he just he just wasn't here we said we said that the raptors weren't good enough because kyle lowry wasn't good enough and because he was not <laughs> rising to that occasion and now we're just going to forget about all of it and and Kawhi is going to show up do all the heavy lifting and then we're just going to let kyle lowry into the hall of fame what point are you arguing against nobody said kyle lowry should ever be the best player on your team nobody said he's a superstar like you're arguing a point no one's making just good, like, that is so different from a Hall of Fame conversation. I'm saying, I'm saying the career, the career that that Kyle Lowry had, post or, or pre Kawhi, and even the stuff that he has done post post Kawhi, is not a Hall of Fame career. And there, and the span in which he was put in quote unquote the right role to thrive is not large enough for you to look at his career and be like, yeah, that's good enough to overcome. <laughs> Everything else. So and it's a Donovan has steam way. coming out of his ear. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I no, I hate this. It it genuinely like, and I understand that the basketball hall of fame <laughs> is it's a basketball hall of fame, not a pro basketball hall of fame, all this other stuff. It's a dis it's not right if Kyle Lowry makes the hall of fame. You're gonna say it was disrespectful to basketball. <laughs> 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 Kyle Lowry was like that. What are you talking about? Oh my about? god, oh, this is too much Kyle like Lowry that. talk. What? Oh my god, shut <laughs> like up. <that. laughs> Guys. Shut up and up, Kyle Lowry Guys. talk. What are we doing? Oh. Kyle Lowry was like that. He was next, cool. Oh god. <laughs> next story. Jeff Teague has another hilarious story from his podcast. He said, I was on the Hawks and we were playing the Pacers. My mama and my aunt were sitting courtside and cheering every time I came in the game. Then Tony Brothers pulls me up to the side and he was like, who them hoes? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Brothers. He's like, who them is? <laughs> who them hoes is crazy. And through Jeff T further explained in this podcast, he was like, bro, what? He didn't hear him the first time. And he had to repeat himself. And he told him that's my mom, auntie, whatever family. And he was pissed throughout the entire game <laughs> and since then he never respected tony brothers and all that and he then sided with chris paul saying oh yeah tony brothers is one of those type of dudes who tries to act cool with you within the second that you you know bark him a little bit like like all the regular rest says he acts like a hoe <laughs> uh Shout out Tony Brothers, man. <laughs> Tony Brothers, man. <laughs> Embarrassing, bro. What a guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's see. Next thing in the doc, we got... Oh, okay. Here's a fun game we got in here. Legion Hoops tweeted, The number one NBA draft picks in the last five years. Rank them one through five. Chat, spam your rankings for these five players. We got Zion Williamson, Anthony Edwards, Cade Cunningham, Victor Wembanyama, and Paolo Bancaro. I want to see how y'all rank them. What are, you, what are you guys thinking? Is this like... So far, like what they've, what are rank them, ranking them based off of? Like yeah. today or yeah, like? Yeah, let's say today. Ranking them today. Kate is last for sure. Yeah, yeah Kate's last. Paolo second to last? Or who, who is Paolo yes. or Wemby better right now? No, Paolo. Paolo's Wemby's four. better. Yeah, okay. Paolo's four. Wemby three and then, or Zion three? Wemby or Zion? That's. I, I'm taking Wemby. Mm. That's tough because uh, Zion been hooping Zion. as a late bro. I under, Zion's defense I isn't as horrible it. anymore. I understand, but the defense that Wemby does have is insane, and the fact that he Wemby can, don't even play with real NBA players yet. 
It's so probably exciting. Wemby. It's, the defense is a big difference. You're right. The defensive impact is ridiculous. Yeah. It's again, you said Wemby doesn't put NBA players. That's a good point. If Wemby had Trey Young yeah. already, he'd be a lot more efficient. I good think he's already gosh. capable. He's a good shooter already. That's come around. Obviously, a good rim finisher. Yeah, like imagine him around an offense that catered him with players who had solidified roles, put him alongside of Herb Jones, put him alongside of CJ McCollum, who, who would feed him, Jose Alvarado, all these other solidified guys. Jose Alvarado. I feel like the conversations. <laughs> He's a silly, he got a contract, <laughs> bro. Do you not respect the dude from the Bronx? Everybody in the NBA, like, congratulations. He's cool. You he's a good player, but he's not going to be out here feeding the, Victor Wembanyama. He'll be the third best player over there on the Spurs, bro. Like, it's that no, now bad. <laughs> he would not. <laughs> who's better than, who's better third than Third best? Sorry, Vassell, Jeremy, Jeremy so Sorry, sorry Vassell. Fourth best player. There we go, bro. Damn, it's okay. Even you then, get the point, though. Who do you think <laughs> Jose Alvarado is a good player. He plays a he's hard, cool. plays a spirit. He's cool. He's feisty. Malachi he has that Branham is just as good. Like you guys are talking about. He's not even better than Malachi Branham. They're pretty similar. <laughs> okay, let me let me relax. <laughs> Jose, Jose, Jose Alvarado this year, averaging a cool six point nine points, two point one assists, <laughs> two point three rebounds on 41 percent from the field, right? But thirty seven percent from three, solid Great. on three and a half attempts a game. No, he's cool. He's cool. Yeah. He's a good player. Yeah, he's fine. He's my Puerto Rican king. So Ant's one, obviously, right? Ant's one, right? Yeah. For now, so Ant yeah, one, Wemby two, Zion three, Palo four, Cade five? I think Dude, that's yeah. away. W. I think that's away. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, you could put Zion above Wemby. I'd understand that. I that, that, that think that's the only real debatable part is two and three right there. Yeah. And I, would, and I wouldn't even be upset if you, if you ultimately decided that you wanted Zion over Wemby. All right, cool. I think Fine. that... That one is a little bit of just a preference in how you want to build your team. Yeah. Uh, so I can see the argument, but I would take Wemby. Yeah. Let's make, let's make a poll for that. I'm seeing a lot of mixed. I, I think that's the consensus in the chat too, but let's start a poll just to be seen. Who is better right now? Zion or Wemby? It's so hard because Zion has been great. Like Zion's playing really well for a winning team. But what? And like. They're polar opposite players. Yeah. Like polar Wemby's so good. Though. So. You have to see through all the con, th see through all the context, and value them based off of what they do right now alone as players. So, yeah, exactly. And try to think about like how their situation affects that, right? Yeah, exactly. But Zion's so, also not in the best situation, so like he could also be better if given a slightly better role on a team. Wemby's in the worst situation though, like one of the two, three worst situations. I mean, sort of. We overblow he that, though. He has a ridiculous deep. high usage. Like, he gets a million touches now. We overblow how bad a situation is. We can't get into, like, the who has the worst Olympics. Because yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> there's always, there's always going to be somebody who has it worse than, than the next guy, and you're just going to be going in circles. I, I, do, I just think that right now the gap between Zion's defense, improved as it is, but his defense and Wemby's defense – that yeah. is that's a massive massive difference maker. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Wemby. Yeah, Wemby okay. now might give me might give you a better chance to win a championship mm -hmm. than Zon now. Mm. That's so uh, weird to say. Maybe I don't know. What well, by next year this conversation will be mute and Wemby we, will I mean, we'll clear all these combos. So for now yeah. it'll be interesting. Well, let's let the chat run up this poll. We read out some donations. Shout out to Horse of Jokic for donating one dollar. He said, next live stream, I want Don to do a tier list of every NBA team based on how much he likes them with elaboration on why he ranked the team that way. <laughs> that would be Hayter hilarious, index. bro. That is amazing. <laughs> we'll do that. I, we'll I, be... I'll get to work. Yeah, that's a good, that's <laughs> yeah. a good stream topic. Include their fan base in that bitch, too. How... Yeah. <laughs> bro, I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll do that. In that bitch. Oh, that's next good. week. Next week. Yeah. Toenail cheese tip $5. Donovan is out here dressed like a dad who just discovered Tyler the Creator for the first time. That's mean. <laughs> and <accurate. Wow. laughs> Okay. That's great. Del Sol, tip $5. We know which side Paul George and Gilbert Arenas will be on for the international versus USA game. I mean, Paul Pierce, sorry. But for <laughs> Paul real, George, I was like, what, what, George? what did my goat say now? He's on the list? <laughs> I was about to tweak. Oh, my God. He's got allegations? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Throw away my PG jersey? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Spider tip $5. He said, you guys should play 21 at 500K or 2v2 with Nikhil. 
Listen, the 2v2 with the kill is happening. We were we discussed this last episode. If y'all didn't see it, go watch Producer Corner from last episode, episode 82. We talked at length about what would happen if me and Mo played Nikhil and Donovan in a 2v2 basketball game. It's going to happen. Be patient. Y'all boys are getting washed. <laughs> y'all are not winning. Watched. You said I'm going to go scoreless, Donovan. That's the worst word you I, I never said scoreless. You did say that. No, no. I, I said remember vividly. Eight. That's still crazy too. But I remember. I remember vividly. Neither or less, you're getting washed. Yeah, you guys are getting <laughs> clapped. Anyways, next thing. Oh, interesting stat that was on Twitter. Kevin Durant, pre Achilles, twenty seven points, seven rebounds, four assists, forty nine percent from the field, thirty eight percent from three. Kevin Durant, post Achilles, twenty eight points, seven rebounds, five point five assists, fifty three percent from the field, forty one percent from three. Kind of insane. Like, I know we talked in the past about him being, like, a miraculous level of longevity despite that what used to be crippling injury. I still think we don't talk about it enough. Uh, this is, like, one of the most miraculous things we've seen in sports. Like, this is ridiculous to be this effective and this better in some ways post the worst sports injury anybody can get. Yeah. yeah. It's, really, it's really crazy how, like, you have a couple – you have certain players who come back from injury and they kind of shape the way – everybody expects everybody to come back from injury. So like Adrian Peterson tears his ACL, comes back in six months, runs for 2000. Everyone's like, oh, the ACL is fine. Like you can, yeah. just, you can just come back in a year. Kevin Durant scoring like this is also probably, you look in football, you look at Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, you'd be like, oh, they'll be all right. Like you know, <laughs> KD's fine, but no, it's, it's a legitimate thing. And so KD is, how, how high of a score, right? Now we're going to, we're getting into bag talk here. Okay. How high on the scoring pantheon would you have Kevin Durant? Is he like a top 10 scorer of all time? He's top a, five in your, in your opinion? Yeah. Top yeah, five? Definitely. Me yeah, personally, definitely. I'll say top five for sure. He just doesn't have those numbers just yet because of all the injuries and how much time he's missed throughout the entirety of his NBA career. He's would easily top five. you him as a top three scorer of all time? Uh, I don't think it's crazy for number three. I mean... Uh, it's always finicky when we talk about LeBron in the scoring ranking. So some people are like, no bag, no bag. But like, you know, he's LeBron James. So like, if we just say that Jordan and LeBron are one and two, then after that, obviously you have what, like Shaq, Steph, KD. Yeah. Kobe. Co sure. Uh, that's, <laughs> we're at like seven now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean that way. The, the, like, pause, yeah, the pause that you had was not. <laughs> yeah, every year you <laughs> right through that. I got, I I, you got it. I was gonna be like, I was just gonna, I was quickly, I was gonna be like, I guess I put KD above him, but I was like, doesn't matter, just keep going. That's yeah, like seven KD guys, right? Me. That's like seven guys. We include KD. If you say those are the best scorers of all time, throw Wilson there. Eight guys. That, that, that's a pretty good range, right? You could put KD as yeah. high as three or as low as eight. Like it's you're really finicky at that point. Oh, you put Larry Bird in there. And then who else will ground the 10th spot to be like the top 10 or so? Is uh, Luka making a push? Is <laughs> one day, out? one day, one day we're going to get that right. for sure. Is he making a push? Where does Harden come into? Oh, Kareem, Kareem. Let's Texas. say Kareem's number 10. Mm. Harden, Harden, Harden's interesting. Have longevity. He doesn't have long, I mean, peak for peak, yeah, but like. And, that's, and that's that's what yeah, I think I think you're talking about like scoring and being one of the, like, the best scorers of all time. You need to be able to have one of those peaks of nobody, there was a point in my career when I was at my best that nobody could stop me. And so Harden having multiple years averaging over 30 points a game, that definitely yeah. works in his favor. Really? This is Harden's five year peak when he averaged 29 or more, including 36 and 34 at the end of that. For yeah. this five year peak, he's at 31.7 points, 8.5 assists, well, Bro. irrelevant, 52% on twos, 35% on threes, and 10 attempts a game, 86% from the free throw line. Harden was so hard to figure out that one day, I think it was Alvin Gentry on the Pelicans at the time or some shit like that, whoever the head coach was, they tried to guard him with hands behind their back. That was a legit was game. That was the Jazz. That was the Jazz. And the playoffs, the that, was a, that was a playoff setting. <laughs> behind, behind the him. back? They, they put Ricky Rubio standing behind James Harden so he couldn't step back and giving him a free lane to the rim. You know how ridiculous that is? That's insane. Bro, that is ridiculous. Harden needs to be in those conversations too. Not okay, really he can he can round out like different. the 11 spot. Add him and Kareem in that range as like the top 10 guys. Katie's at minimum, like top eight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. What a career for Kevin Durant. 
What else? Oh, okay, this is an interesting story. Uh, we got. McAdoo? Ah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we got a report. Multiple veteran NBA execs believe 2024 draft class is the worst they've ever seen. Obviously, we don't have strong opinions about this. None of us are college guys. None of us really are dive deep into it until draft season. If this is true, and it's one of those like 2013 type classes that's just like famously shit, and which, you know, there's always going to be diamonds in the roughs. We got Giannis in that draft class. We got other people. It happens. But if, you know, for the majority of it won't be the super high level, does that change how you want certain teams to operate? You know, whether you, you say they no. should blow it up, they should do things like, how much does this affect outlook for teams? No. Okay. Scouts hate <laughs> to scout. Coaches hate to coach. You know what I'm saying? Do your job. Like, I, I obviously, regardless of what scouts think, all of the guys in, in the draft are very, very talented. And I'm sure that if you get a guy and you can develop him and put him in situations that he thrives in, you figure out what he does well and let him do, do that, you can create and develop a very good player. This just, to me, when I see stuff like this, I'm like, you guys are just scared to, to coach. You guys are just scared <laughs> to, to develop. Because if you go to the 2013 draft, there's some players in it. And that yeah. was a draft that other people also said was a very, very bad draft. And you can go kind of later into the lottery and find good players. They just have to be developed. And people aren't doing that. Giannis is in that draft. CJ McCollum, Victor Oladipo, Steven right? Steven Adams, I think. There's good players in the 2013 draft. And there's going to be good players in this one, too. People just have to be smart about what they're looking at and how they bring them into their program. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I agree. Seeing this is they're just talking about like overall quality and how star studded this draft is, which objectively, like, it's not. Everyone's been seeing ha people had tabs of this high school class over the last few years, and there was no major, like, there was never the guy. You know, if you look at all the top high school recruits, like DJ Wagner wasn't on shit for Kentucky, obviously. Like, I don't want to say Bronny because he was never like five star or anything like that, but still. You know, like all these guys throwing the G League guys as well. They were just it was, it was never no generational player. And I think over the last few years, we just been spoiled with the Wemby's. You could say the Ben Simmons, Zion's. Fuck it. Like there's there's not even like a RJ Barrett level prospect in this year's draft, which is absolutely insane. And that just goes to show like how spoiled we've been over the last few years. So obviously we're just going to go through. No RJ Barrett. Our, Let's not gas it too much. <laughs> RJ Bear was special coming out of high school, for sure. Yeah, but that's, okay, that's out of high guessing. school, yeah, but not coming out of college. I, I, coming out of college, his draft stock had plummeted quite a bit. So, like at that point, I think like I think Alexander but Saar he, would have went above him in a draft. Yeah, his draft stock only plummeted because people around him were just like straight up better, you know. And at, all the scouts just started to face, sniff that out over the, as time went on. Yeah, Joel Embiid is currently five for ten from the field. He has fourteen points in how many minutes is this? In sixteen minutes. One Joel, Joel Embiid watched for the first game. Five assists, four rebounds. Back. This guy's crazy. They're currently losing, though. They're down by 10. To the Shea mm -hmm. and J.W. Liss, Oklahoma City Thunder. Chet Holmgren's first game is a one option. <laughs> mm. <Zephra. laughs> oh, my gosh. Josh Diddy is over here leading this team, bro. That's kind of crazy. Oh, what? what? The Knicks are down 15. Bums. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, Brunson. Is Brunson hurt? He only has four points. This is terrible. <laughs> Another mildly interesting story. There's a Cavs reporter that tweeted out some messages that he got from apparently somebody within the Cavs locker room after their latest loss. You know, the Cavs haven't been too great as of late since Donovan Mitchell's been hurt and in and out of the lineup. Uh, Donovan Mitchell apparently said, it's fucking April, we've got to figure this out. Voicing frustration after their most recent loss. Interesting to keep tabs on this team because they've been very up and down throughout the year. You know, they had that crazy win streak whenever Garland and Evan Mobley were out and Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen were just eating. They won like 17 out of 20 games flew up to the second seed just been very unlucky with injuries across their entire lineup Darius Garland has been shit as of late nothing's meshing well over the last couple weeks with Donovan Mitchell in another lineup what's your current feel about this team well, how you Man. Doing? going up against the Denver Nuggets is a great measuring measuring stick of course to see where you where where you rank in terms of like how close you are to you know being towards the top of the NBA and to be clapped by 30 points, basically, <laughs> without Jamal Murray is very disheartening for your star point guard like Darius Garland to go ahead and put up five points. Very disheartening. You know what I'm saying? 
Donovan Mitchell didn't even play well either as an individual. So I think it's clear as day that like, you know, if if more if this continues to happen in the playoffs, which is just like you know Darius and Donovan Mitchell not coexisting very well, then there's going to be a clear trade during the offseason. From what yeah. I see, if they have another disaster, it's a trade happening, bro. They have a lot weighing on this playoff push. Whichever way it goes, a lot will be affected by that. I'll say. Yeah. Scary out. So, but where does he go? There's, there's really just like two. So obviously, like the big names, even in the summer, people were talking about Knicks, Nets, Heat. Those are kind of and like I don't, I don't know if the Knicks would do it anymore. So you really have like Brooklyn and Miami would be the two spots. If you were, I want to re, re, kind of revisit this. If you were Orlando, would you trade for Donovan Mitchell? Yes, in a fucking heartbeat. They'd be amazing with Donovan Mitchell. He'd be the perfect player over there. Perfect. Put him at point guard. Oh my goodness. That's the cook. that's the surprise team that I want. That's the team that I really, really want to see make a move and be the surprise one out. Like the same way that Cleveland was, right? And and come out of nowhere. If I was Donovan Mitchell, I'd be heated. I'd be furious. If I was like, give me to New York, give me to Miami, and I go to Cleveland and Orlando, I would be mad. <laughs> but it would work out perfectly. Basketball it would. Yeah. I don't think Orlando I think, would do it because he's about to be an expiring contract. And for the reason you just said, I don't think, I don't know if he'd resign there yeah. after one year. Yeah. I agree. Awesome, Another team though. that's like I need that sleeper. Though. I don't know if they, if they did it, they would have to reconstruct a lot of parts of their team, like Brandon Ingram, man, CJ McCollum. Just can't keep both of those guys there in my mind. Um, but the Pelicans, I want to see that happen for sure. That'll be a fucking beautiful pick and roll um, duo right there. Chat, what's y'all's dream D Mitch team? If you were, if they were to flame out again and he became available, or Darius Garland for both of them, I, I, I'll ask that to both y'all. Chat, do you if you had to trade Donovan Mitchell or Darius Garland or both, which teams would y'all want to see them on? Obviously, I'm also yeah. Darius yeah, Garland, I know, I know where you're going. Yeah, I'm San pushing Antonio that. Spurs. I've been pushing that shit. San Antonio yep. Spurs. <laughs> oh my god, he would be fantastic on the Spurs too. That would like and that would be like so much more palatable than Trey Young because there's like less yeah. of the downside. Obviously, he's probably a little bit cheaper. And just like he, Trey Young's better, but Darius Garland would be a uh, more vein. natural fit as a second option, right? In yeah. people's minds, it, it would be pretty awesome. I need Darius Garland to be free because Darius Garland is one of the most promising young guards in the league, having a rough year because of injuries, having a rough two years in terms of his development and getting better and better because D. Mitch's presence has kind of taken away touches from him. People don't forget how special 2021 2022 Darius Garland was. He was on fire. We were talking about him as one of the most promising young guards in the entire NBA. For good reason. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, 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 agree. I, I agree. If I was the Spurs, I would definitely go after someone like Darius Garland over Trey Young because Darius's name just doesn't have as much the reputation, the cachet. He's just not there because he's Darius Garland. But with that being said, the talent isn't like a steep drop off, and he's much more of a he's he's a better asset to go ahead and go after him. Yeah, opinion. people are saying Orlando. Yeah, that makes sense too. Orlando would be nice for Darius Garland. Does Philly Maybe. have the space to go get D Mitch? Cash space, yes. Do. Assets, no. But they, yeah. they, they're they going to... This summer, they can free up, like, two max slots almost. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know if Cleveland... Would Cleveland be, like, bitches and not want to go ahead and deal him off to anyone in their in their conference? I don't I know. Teams it. are weird like know. that sometimes. Yeah, who's, who's to say? I can't imagine Cleveland's not type of position of contention and they're really going to be worried about that. But Cleveland, who knows? bro. <laughs> you have no right to act like that. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing we're going to do, we're going to watch... Or Donovan... Let's get some Knicks propaganda off. We're going to react to some of the best performers. I said that, but it's about a loss. Yeah. We're going to react to the best performances of the week, y'all. And first off, we have to talk about Jalen Brunson dropping 61 points against the San Antonio Spurs and Wemby responding with 40 and 20 to beat their asses. How did you feel watching this game? It was an overtime win. Like, relax. You got beat by a rookie and a bunch of scrubs while your star has 61. <laughs> Embarrassing. How did you feel? Yeah, they're going to have 40 and 20. <laughs> 40, 20, 20 and impressive. 7 assists, bro. It, it, it doesn't make sense to say in the, in one sentence. Yeah. But how did you feel about Jalen Brunson dropping 61? Um, I mean, I actually didn't even have time to feel great about it because I didn't watch <laughs> the game. I didn't watch watch the game live, and so I didn't see what happened. I was at um, I was at a, a Yankees Astros game at the time, and so I got out of the stadium, and then I went on Twitter, 
and uh and people were like oh i guess uh he might he's probably asleep because he hasn't said anything about brunson <laughs> and i looked at the box and i was like oh man we lost and i clicked on it again it's like he did what <laughs> and so it just it sucked to see this performance kind of you know go go by the wayside but he was, the he was amazing he, yeah no it's, it's crazy but also listen helps us push some Wemby propaganda that I will never hesitate to push. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't even, I'm going to turn off. These, these are Brunson party. highlights. Let's watch the fucking Wemby highlights. Let's get to what we're here for. Let's get to the man of the hour, the guy who won this game. Victor Wemby John with a 40 and 20. Listen, it just, it, it just, all the takes you can have about him, you go as high as you want with that lofty expectations you have. It keeps getting easier and easier to make these, these lofty goals and lofty takes about him because he keeps doing stuff like this. You're never going to be wrong no matter what you say about Victor Wembanyama. That's the best part about making takes about him. You just won't ever be yeah. wrong. Look at that. Man. Look at that rebounding. There's this one clutch play that he made towards the end of the fourth quarter, I believe, where he hit like a – it was a off-the-dribble three-pointer. Off of doing, yeah, it was off-the-dribble three-pointer, and he just cashed that bitch, and he helped close, Look close the gap. Look how full court after a block. Bro. Like he's he's handing the ball a lot more lately, taking it full court, almost like a Jokic or a yeah. Sabonis. That's gonna be such a big part of his game when he hits his prime and becomes more physical and more ability to go coast to coast like a Giannis. When he's running coast to coast like Giannis and finishing the rim over everybody in two years, <laughs> what are you gonna do? I mean, look at these passes. He was in the zone as well. Yeah. You saw the full array of passes as well. These pocket passes, these corner ones. Threw a little oh, bounce player makes- on it just because. Yeah. Exactly. His team's so hard to defend with him doing those type of things. You can't key in on him and like take away things and just derail his. What? Look at, look, at that. Look, at, look at that! Look at look that! At this. Come back! Look at this. Okay, sets the screen, comes off of the small screen off of from Malachi Branham, blows right by three defenders. Hart and Mitchell Robinson recovers in the pick and roll, does a decent job. Bert, Hart fucking slides over, but gives the worst contest ever. Because what do you even do? Like he jumps and he's still at his chest. He has no effect on the shot despite a decent rotation. <laughs> That's hilarious. This is terrible. I'd be sick to my stomach if I had to guard this man, man. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Actually, now I'm looking at it. I think Josh Hart's giving some shitty rotations. He's just kind of standing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, listen, man. He's him. Somebody said Wemby's overpowered. Exactly. We got to talk about him like a fucking video game character. Like he's a build in 2K. Yeah. Nerf him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nerf him. Let's take away his animations. Riley, Riley in the chat said, I feel very comfortable projecting him to be top three of all time. I'm not at the point of saying those things yet, but I'm like, all right, sure. If you said that about any other rookie, I'd be like, just get out of my face. <laughs> yeah. I've been saying it, though. I, I agree with it. You agree with it? Potential for sure. Oh, I don't want to. It's hard to Oh, my goodness, bro. I feel so bad for the Knicks players, too. Mitch Robinson was giving his fucking all, bro. He was hobbled during this game. And he was just like, yo, he got it. After this, Jalen Brunson was like, yeah, he's going to be one of the greatest players that, that we, we've ever seen. It's just like he just accepted defeat. Every NBA player, once they come across him, they're just like a loss for words. And we haven't seen anybody do that since like fucking Steph coming out back in 2015, 2014. Yeah, this is hilarious. I'll read some recent donations real quick. Shout out to Useless XD for tipping ten dollars. He said, "Good takes, my best player." I don't know what that means, but appreciate you, Useless. <clears throat> and shout out to Mo Likes Toes for tipping three dollars. He said, "Hypothetical for Don, Carmelo and Curry have their lives on the line. To save him, you need to get a Clippers tattoo somewhere visible. Are you doing it?" This is wait, for you, Don. Wait, wait, say that again. Somebody has a gun to Carmelo Anthony and Steph Curry's head. To save their lives, you need to get a Clippers tattoo on your body in a visible place. Are you doing it? Yeah, I'll do it. You do it for Melo. I'll do it. I'll, I'll oh. save. I'll save them both because then I can show the tattoo and be like, "I'm a hero." <laughs> <laughs> Melo gonna look at you and be like, "This motherfucker is crazy." Security. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Next segment we're gonna do. We're gonna do a new stream staple, y'all. We're gonna do Donovan's debate of the day. Every week, Donovan. Are you, you tell him about it, Donovan. Tell, tell him what. Tell him what you got for us. So listen, every every week we're going to come in here and I have a lot of debates with the people in my life. Sometimes things go back and forth in my head. I might I might debate myself. We're going to bring that here to the stream and I'm going to have a topic to where I want you guys to weigh in. I'm going to talk to the guys about it. We're going to embrace debate here on Mo Cheek Mondays. 
And something. <laughs> Tuesday. Oh, true, but it is it is a Tuesday. <laughs> um, so over, I think like the weekend, I was called per usual an old man on Twitter yep. because I said I saw a tweet of the NBA and standings from 2014, and people said the way that the NBA used to seed the the NBA playoffs was crazy, and I quoted it and I said that the NBA should go back to seeding by division, which means that mm. if you win your division like the Denver Nuggets did here in this uh, in this year, you get a top three seed. Even if teams below you or outside of your division have more wins than you, if you win your division, you get a top three seed. Four. And I said we right? should go back to that. Oh, no, and three, I was, yes, and I was called an old man, a nostalgia merchant, all that type of stuff. And I think that this is the, this is the way that the NBA needs to do this. Yeah, you're yapping. This is absolutely nonsense. Look at the screenshot. Yeah, the Mavericks it. have 60 wins and there's a four seed. Get out of my face. Why would this be better for anybody in any situation? What are you talking about? And here's and here's, my, and here's my and here's my point. And here's my point. And the question that I have for everybody, right? Why are you not consistent? Because what? the because everything that you love in the NFL, you hate in the NBA. The NFL does this exact same thing. Small market teams thrive in the NFL. You hate them in the NBA. The NFL and the best and the biggest league in, in America does all these things. But when Adam Silver comes in and takes them away when he wants to do it, you don't like it. Also, why do we have division, division records are part of tiebreakers? And I, and I think that if you have divisions, then there should be some type of incentive for having divisions. Now, I think to further incentivize it, you can have more divisional games, right? You can you can do certain things with the schedule to make it better. But I do think that winning your division should mean something. It makes more sense in the NFL because the smaller amount of games and everything matters. So adding that wrinkle onto it isn't a backbreaker. I think that like it adds a cool wrinkle because everything's so tense as is that like it's fine even if it's not like objectively the smartest thing to do. In the NBA, when you have 82 game season, if you were to do what happens in this screenshot right here and be the Mavericks and win 60 games and finish as the four seed while you watch somebody with 44 wins above you after playing 82 games where you have such an just immense amount of data to tell you who is the better team and who earned a spot, it's hilarious. It's nonsense. It adds nothing. I get it if you want to just like add division rivalries, but that only works wow. in the NFL because a small amount of games make each of those rivalries and each of those games matter a lot to your record. In here, your division record isn't what matters. I, I mean, you're... Division records aren't, the, aren't like a big chunk of the games, you know? So it's not going to feel like anything special. And that's, and that's what I'm saying. One, you can change the schedule to do that. And I, I, can acknowledge, I can acknowledge that three might be too high. I do think that if you win your division, you should automatic, you should be no lower than four. You should be able to have home court advantage in the first round if you win your, your division. Because like the way, that, the way that it's set up, like theoretically, you can have, you can have, um, so like this year, why can't the they Celtics? just do their job? Why are you trying to reward them? <laughs> their job is to what win games. What do you mean? Why, why are you trying to... Why do you want to reward them? them for winning their division? You're, the whole reason why you play is just to win, bro. You win your division? Congratulations. Start then take you. out conferences. Let's I go, mean, let's go, let's go one through 16. The only you, reason that's not happening is because travel would be ridiculous to have people do that in a playoff yeah. setting. That's the biggest obstacle there. It's an easier sell to say no conferences and have one through 16 than it is to say do the division thing. It's honestly, it's honestly not, though. Mm. You already you already have you already have the the divisions set up. The only thing that you would have to change is like Memphis. You're actually in the Eastern Time Zone. Yes, you will actually be in in uh, an Eastern Conference team. Like you can realign stuff, and that's probably going to happen after expansion. But you should have all these other things: con conference, home and away. Like those come into they come in into play everywhere else. And so I think that like division should also come, come into play and you do. And that's why in order to do this, you have to like increase the amount of divisional games. That's the, that's my one stipulation is you make sure that you play people in your division more than you play everybody else. Cause there's really no reason for like but the Bucks and the Kings to play four like two times a year or the Knicks and the Bucks to play four times a year. That doesn't matter. That's my, that's my only stipulation. Yeah. But then you're not going to be able to play every team or you're just playing one time. Like, why is that better? I mean, I, can't, I guess I get it because no, no, the that's what that's what I'm saying. You don't like the the inner conference stuff. So like the Knicks and the Bucks, they're not in the same division. They're in the same conference. You guys don't need to play four times a year. 
it's a, it's they okay. Don't, do they? If, sometimes sometimes they do, yeah. Like in the in the same conference, you either play three or four times a year. Gotcha. Mm. And so you don't have you don't have to do that. But the the divisional stuff works, and it it would actually be a lot of fun. I I promise you, if you did it the right way, it would be a lot of fun. Just, we, just, we just had it. Like it's, you're saying, we should go back to this. We we just had it. It wasn't that fun. There's a reason we got rid of it. So like I don't think it is. I don't know the because the old system wasn't what I was saying. Adam Silver <laughs> didn't call me. David Stern didn't call me. But if they let me set up the schedule the way that I know how, guys, I can make you guys. I can make things better. Just understand that. <laughs> So Ooh, uh, bro is actually wasting air for this crazy take. <laughs> <laughs> wasting That's air. Funny. That's funny. No, there's uh, people in the chat that see the vision. Some people are agreeing with it. They said it would be nice to have some rivalries in the game. I understand that. That makes sense. For sure. It makes sense. But I just don't believe. I feel like if you do that, then you're just kind of taking away a part of what these NBA players are supposed to do, and you're just trying to reward them for every, like, tidbit. Oh, you showed up to practice on time. Let me go ahead and give you some starbursts after practice. Do you not it's like question, some question, 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 you, question for you on that real quick. Do you not think that the plan does the same exact thing? The plan's different because it makes the NBA more entertaining towards the back half, towards the dead period. So now, so now we're worried about entertainment rather than – rather than rewarding people for what you're doing because there's people like the Hawks. The Hawks are are in the 10th seed. They're going to be in the play and and, and are going to have a chance to be in the playoffs, even though that they are six and a half games behind behind the Heat and they are five games behind the Sixers. But you win two straight games. We can throw 82 games out the window and you get a chance to be in the playoffs. Win your game. Clap the clap the shitty team that you gotta play. Like, what do you mean? Like, just beat them. They're they're bad. Like you Why? said, beat them. If you are if you are the Heat or the Sixers, I I just played eight months of basketball, <laughs> and I am five to six games. I'm two weeks of basketball better than somebody else, and now you are making me play teams that are nowhere near me. Should have got your six seed. What do you mean? Get like, three be weeks better, bro. Get four yeah. weeks better. It's and not my fault. And now, and now this saying. is exactly yeah. this is exactly what I'm saying. You cannot pick and choose when the regular season matters and when it doesn't. If I'm, what do you, you mean? No one says it doesn't matter. For for the teams, if you are like, do you okay? You remember in the bubble the first the first time, if you were not within four games of the eight seed, then you cannot participate in the play in. And yeah. I. I like I like that aspect because yeah, then it's fun. like, yeah, because then then you're actually there. I think the way that it's currently set up, where you can be ten games back and still in the ten seed, but you would still have an opportunity to play in the play-in, and that I don't believe is fair because then what do we what do we do for I get it la- for, for the last six months? I'd be cool with that rule too, but in the day, even without it, one. If you're 10 you don't games care. back, no, no, no. if you're you, 10 you, games you, back, you don't care you're going to get clapped. Games. You should get clapped. You, you shouldn't be worried about beating a team that's 10 games worse than you. And it's a one-game scenario, that, though. Yeah, but because of that, on the other side, you have the West, which is much more compact. And in that point, it actually makes sense to give the 10 seed just as much of a fighting chance to the 8 seed because the records are basically the same. So and there's what, pros and, and cons on saying. both sides. And the cons are far less consequential because if you are the Hawks, you're going to get fucked and you should get fucked. If you lose to the Hawks as the eight seed, that's on you. Skill issue. Beat the Hawks. Like it's not hard. Skill issue. <laughs> like, and that is and just I'm beat saying, the Hawks. And I'm saying the Sixers should not be in that position at all. And and you should have. That's what I'm saying. Like you need to be within a certain amount of games to where it's even fair. Because again, why are we playing 82 games then? If I if I've played eight months and I've played all these games, we played the same amount of games. I'm clearly better. But now I have to go go the extra mile. That's not fair. Just beat the Hawks. Yeah. <laughs> and end all be all like at the end. No, of, no, you guys, you, guys, you guys just don't care because it's the seventh and eighth seed, and you're like, oh, well, they're gonna lose in the next round. No, because you're saying the regular season doesn't matter. You get the six seed, and it's not an issue. You have, just have to beat the Hawks. Like it's not like it's you're not a victim because you got to beat the Hawks or get the six seed. Like it's not like it's something like some travesty to have to get into this tournament. And you also have yeah. an advantage. You have to They're lose twice close. instead of once. Like you had an advantage there. They're not there. closed. They're not close to them. No, I get it. It would be. I think it would be fine to have the conditional rule, like you said. But it's not. The regular season doesn't matter because you got to beat the Hawks. Like it's not like it's some ridiculous thing. You put it's less of a premium on. I don't. I don't have to be the eighth mm-hmm. best team. I could be the tenth best team and still have a path to the to the playoffs. 
and that's or not get right. the sixty. You don't got to worry about it. That's the premium, and that's, and that's not right. Any anybody can be any team once. Anybody that's, can do that one time. We're just sure. worried about the Hawks, all right? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, but. we're worried about them because that's this year, obviously. But like, yeah. it's one time. Look, it's, it's, MVP, a, it's a one game scenario. Look at look at March Madness and look at all look at all all the stuff that happens every single year because it is, it is a one game scenario. And it's if not you it's a two asking, game scenario. You got to win twice. You if you're the eighth, you got to lose twice. You have two chances, two bites of the apple. You it every time it is a one game scenario. You are playing if you lose to the Hawks and you end up playing whatever, or if you lose to the Heat yeah. and then you, you end get up two one game scenarios. You win once is a is a is a one game scenario every single time. That is, and this game is different from that different. From Except this you game get two of them. From win once. Like it's it's not like you get two chances. I shouldn't even have to go through this. I've proved over eighty two games that I'm better. You didn't though, because you didn't prove it enough. Team. You got the sixty. You would have really proved it. Prove it enough, and that's <laughs> and that is my entire point. Is that you, you're, you're penalizing me for not? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Is... Another side of it is the money and entertainment, which is the NBA, which is what the NBA should be all about. That's the number one focus alongside money and you get the best bang for your buck doing both and i can say the same thing about about divisions nah it like, can't it would, no you can't it would be, it would be, yeah, it's completely different it, it would, it the would play be, it is, an, is literally an event the division is just an idea instead of having to be better instead of having to be better than 14 <laughs> teams in your conference you just have to be better than the four teams within a 50 mile radius <laughs> that's all you have to do and you could be a top four seat Oh, I you're making two points that are separate make sense looping them together. It's no, just I'm debating like, everything now. I'm debating. I'm, I'm knocking them down. <laughs> I'm knocking them down. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, time to move on from this lengthy argument. Don's debate of the day is over. Hope y'all were convinced in the chat. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do what the title of this episode is about. We're gonna talk about our best and worst takes of the NBA season. We were right about a good amount of stuff. We got a lot of shit wrong this year. We had some awful predictions to start the year. And every year predictions are a bit of a mixed bag, right? You're literally guessing, obviously based on some background, but you don't know what players look like coming into the season. So like me and Mo were pretty high on the Atlanta Hawks. They were too good. They were pretty, pretty wrong. So we're going to go one by one and we're both, we're all going to name something we got right and something we got wrong this year. Mo, you want to go first? Yeah, I think first things first, uh, easy one, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Isaac, yep. you had them at an 11 seed. Me, 10, 10 seed. Donovan, you were highest, 9 seed. None of us really believe in them whatsoever. And the duo, trio, big three that they built. And, of course, they're the one of the biggest success stories in the entire NBA. Anthony Edwards ascending. Uh, Rudy Gobert gaining back all the reputation and respect that he lost. And Car Anthony Towns, when he was healthy, figuring out at the four spot and being more of a connector, more of a, uh, you know, passer and showing his vision and all that and just figuring out ways to be effective alongside Rudy, which is, like, tough to do at times. So they are, like, one of the biggest things that I was fucking wrong about. You know, I'm saying chat, that's just yeah. straight up a shock of the year. Chat, were you right or wrong about the Timberwolves? Did you see the Timberwolves coming, chat? Be, be honest. Tell us if you're wrong because everybody up here was dead wrong about it. We talked about it in the past. I, I, I have thoughts, obviously. Donovan, why did you not believe in the Timberwolves? Because they suck last year. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's simple. And it just looked like it looked like the writing was on the wall. It looked like they had a fundamental flaw in terms of like Anthony Edwards and the spacing and him and Cat being able to work. Is Cat going to be able to, to play this kind of, of defense? Is Rudy Gobert going to be able to be put in a position to where he can fully be the center and the defensive anchor that he wants to be? Looking at things last year, it didn't feel like that. And so I also didn't – I was a little bit more hesitant, I think. I can't remember. But I think I was a little bit more hesitant on the Anthony Edwards like hype train. Yeah. Of, oh, yeah, he's going to – you know, blossom into like this top 10, top eight player. And so they took a lot of leaps this year that I did not think was going to happen. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, only thing that really held me back, which the thing is, I didn't think they were ass. I just thought the conference would be so loaded that they were going to be like somebody had to miss out. When we did the predictions, I was like, all these teams in the play-in are going to be pretty good, but there's just too many good teams there. I didn't think they could have a top like one defense that they did. I thought Cat would like really hold them back defensively because he kind of did last year. And we saw his lack of mobility in the perimeter really hurt them in a lot of scenarios. That's I think that was a big reason why the Gobert and Cat thing didn't really work last year, spacing offensively and defensively. And I was just like, we have all these teams that are so good. 
they're not going to have an elite offense or defense. And I was right about the offense. The offense is about what I expected, middle of the road. I thought their clunkiness and lack of spacing in that way would hold them back on that end, and it did. I was just dead wrong about the defensive side of the ball. They have been absolutely yeah. incredible. Rudy Gobert is healthy and looked like Gobert. Anthony Edwards made a big leap defensively. Mike Conley's been solid. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker has been one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA from the point guard position. I didn't know that would be a thing. Uh, obviously, I was high on Jay McDaniels, but like, Cat's done his job, and even with him gone, Nas Reed stepped into that role, and like, neither of them have been bad or holding them back in any way and have allowed everything else to flourish alongside them. I didn't think that was going to be the case. I agree, bro. Literally oh, wow. so shocking, bro. Crazy. So shocking. No one saw that shit coming. Yeah, good for them. Donovan, I mean, some people were high on it, and I respect them, I guess, but I, I wasn't really to die, ready to die on that hill. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Donovan, you want to talk about what you're right about? What I was right about? Yeah. Let's give a wrong about I mean, Let's all go through one wrong, yeah. and then we'll go through one right. Um, the thing that I think I was most wrong about was I said that the ceiling – for the Dallas Mavericks was 500 this year. Um, okay, but you were right though before the trades. I, I was, I was kind of. Um, yeah. But so okay, you know, I'll give myself a, a little bit of credit. I need to I think go we'll, back. And, yeah, yeah, I need to go back. I need to pull up our our predictions episode and see. I got it right what, now. Okay, so one thing you I had the about, Dallas Mavericks at 10. I'll go uh, next while you guys look over that. One thing yeah. I was wrong about was. I thought the Golden State Warriors would be perfectly fine. I predicted them to be like a top five seed. I thought they'd be, you know, chugging along. Them and the Warriors. I had them and the Lakers both at four and five or so. They are not perfectly fine. They are extremely mid. Now, they're decent now, but the conference is so loaded and got so much better that the Warriors kind of got left in the dust. I didn't expect them to be so down horrendous. Post losing Jordan Poole, losing a step of Klay Thompson, everything else they lost. I thought they'd start the season a lot better than they did. True. True. It's tragic for them, bro. I mean, we were all, I was especially wrong about them. I think I had them the highest. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I had them as high as the third seed. You had them as the fourth seed, not too much higher, but still, you had high expectations. And Donovan was actually the lowest on them because he was so high on it compared to other, a lot of other teams. But yeah, this season, we see them the most uh, getting their ass kicked for making horrendous decisions. Back in the, what, 2020 NBA draft, draft picks always comes back to bite teams in the ass. People just don't realize that until it's year three or four. And when they're really supposed to have these players start to enter their prime years. And so, yeah, man, like it's just it's a, it's a tough scene for the Warriors. And they feel for hella reasons, whether it be Draymond Green and his like personal issues, Klay Thompson fighting his demons and getting over the ego trip and all that other shit. And then Steph Curry is having natural ups and downs, bro. It's just, there's no room for errors. Yeah, I thought Mosin would have a big role in the team. I thought Wiggins would be back to playing like normal, which he's got, he's up and down. But like, I just thought they would be who we saw them be over the last 20 games. I thought that would have been them the whole year and they'd been perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. Okay, I pulled up the predictions episode. I was wrong <laughs> about the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh, I had the Pelicans them? at 12. Damn, 12? 12. I was not a believer in, in Zion. Um, I did not think that he was going to be able to stay healthy. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I did not think that any of this would be able to, to work. I did not think that they would be able. Right now, they are six in net rating. They, have, they are six in defense. I did not see that, that coming um, at all. So Zion has, has obviously, like, stepped it up and has – you know, morphed. I, honest, honestly, like from the version of, of Zion and what we kind of thought he was going to be when he first got into the league to where he is now, which is like year five, which is crazy. But he's been able to to switch up his game, and New Orleans has adjusted how they how they use him, and it's really unlocked kind of like a new level for him and for them. And right now, their biggest problem is just like that the overall personnel doesn't fit around him in order mm-hmm. to get to like championship stuff. Yeah, but I mean, listen, they're good enough to be in top six, and yeah. I did not think that coming into the year. Chat, did y'all believe? Did y'all believe in the Pelicans coming into this year? Chat, let us know. Yeah, uh, oh. I I was wrong about them to an extent because I thought their defense would be really terrible because their defensive personnel in the starting lineup is terrible, and it's been good. They've managed to coach their way into having a really good team defense over the year. But I think I was right about the reasons I pointed out at the beginning of the year that Jonas Valanciunas is a terrible fit there next to Zion, and that like it's just a lot of pieces that. 
too many. We need to get we need to get rid of that position there. Get some more mobility. Get some more rebounding. Preferably some spacing at the center position. I think all that's been proven right still. They've just managed to be good despite of it because Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram are defending so well on the perimeter as your wing trio mm-hmm. that they've been able to mask that big issue. But I do still think it's a big issue. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Damn, bro. I personally was high on them. Well, no, actually it wasn't. I, me and you, Isaac, had them at, as the seventh seed. But as its season continued, I started to see glimpses of not greatness, but like, hey, yo, they're actually kind of cooking something after all these years with Azan. You know what I'm saying? They've mm-hmm. been a good team in general without Azan since last year when they faced off, like, I think, like against the the uh, Phoenix Suns or two years ago against the Phoenix Suns in the playoffs or whatever it was. Um, they're, they've always been a good team, but seeing them put to be put the pieces together was interesting. They have a whole lot of mix mass mix match pieces pieces, and it took a long time for Willie Green to figure it out, and he's figured it out m- mostly more than ever. And I was just like super skeptical on them for all the right reasons, like you were saying. Yeah. Like Zion is just a huge X factor, and the West got so much better too. So it's like, yeah. how can you rank them higher? Yeah, and they're not that much different from the seven seed right now. Uh, we, exactly. they're, what, they're currently the five seed, six, at, or six actually, and yeah. the Grizzlies fell apart, which if they were healthy, you would assume would have been higher. So, like, I think we were about right with the Pelicans. Yeah, I agree yeah. for sure. That, that's another thing. The Grizzlies, nobody expected all their players to get hurt, so they are a big X factor here. I'm sure they would have been a top six seed like always, and that never happened. So you got to keep that in mind whenever you think about everybody and where you place them before the season. Mm-hmm. Another true. one I was very wrong about, the other team that's on the screen right now, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Chat, let me know if y'all thought the Oklahoma City Thunder would be a top three team in the Western Conference coming into this year. Because I know a lot of people were very high on them. People like Bill Simmons were famously very high on them coming into the season. And were like, you know, I think they could be a sneaky top four team. And like, I heard all that. <laughs> and I like, I saw the vision a little bit. I knew they could be better. I thought they'd still be a playing team. I thought the hype was getting a little bit too extreme. Because I didn't realize the difference Shed Holmgren would make. I was like, listen, it's a rookie big. Let me be conservative. Let me assume that he'll play like a rookie big and things will take time, right? He came off a whole season and missed. Let's assume he will be a normal rookie. The motherfucker is not. The motherfucker is one of the best rim protectors in the NBA. Transform their defense overnight. Transform their offensive scheme overnight by giving them a true stretch five who is more than just somebody who can hit open three. He's a truly stretch five that really makes defenses really good out there, can attack off the dribble. Honestly, he's one of the more impactful players additions into the NBA this year change that team on both sides of the ball that's a single factor that made them go from like maybe being a playing range to top three Mm -hmm. plus uh yeah we were wildly wrong all of them to go back in time i think i had them as an eighth seed i believe off the top of my head let me go ahead and look check real quick on this we all had playing range yeah i think i think range is more important than specific seed but we all had them in the area right exactly you had an eight seed i had eight seed and donovan seven seed so playing a range we all saw them coming last year. They were literally in the plane as well. And uh, Chet, like you said, is the main reason why the entire equation has changed. Shea's been Shea. He's been the same player since last year. Obviously a little bit better as time with that natural progression. j same thing. He just literally gets better every single week of his career, is what it seems like. And Chet is the main thing. That just makes this puzzle piece so interesting. He's like the connector and brings all the pieces together for them. He's the uniqueness that a lot of teams do not fucking have. Yeah, I was so wrong yes. about that, bro. Yes, yes. So, sorry, I was I was looking at, at something else. Um, yeah, no, I think I I think I was I was also with Isaac in, in the fact that like I wanted to put the Thunder very very high, and I just wanted to be conservative. Um, I yeah, I didn't. You did. I just, I, I really, really thought that they could be a top six seed. I, I did not think at all that they were going to be like, you know, fighting for the number one seed. But, I mean, after after everything that that Shea was doing last year, and we saw, especially in the playing game, the one thing that they were missing all year was a big man, and Chet Holmgren came in and was exactly that, and he yeah. fit everything that he. He fit the mold of everything that they needed. And that's really why I wanted to vault him up. But like Isaac said, I was like, he's listen, he's a skinny rookie coming off of off of a foot injury. Let's let's keep it down a, a little bit. And but no, he they're 
they're they're great. They're probably going to make a, a deep playoff run. And yeah. Side note, our logo is currently on the scoreboard on the TNT game right now. If you watch, if you guys switch to Thunder saw. versus 76ers, there's a currently a Max advertisement for the deep three on Max. Come on. To, wait, come we on. need I'm a about, screen I'm, I'm we about need to something. Screenshot. What the hell? <laughs> so yeah, if y'all pull up, uh, I don't know how to find a screenshot because I'm watching on currently pull it up on you let me pull up uh what was it called no that's actually very cool no that's actually need, very I cool i need something bro i need something yeah go pull it pull something. tnt <laughs> ground eaters go ahead take pictures screenshots do something <laughs> no, I need this intel, bro. yeah tweet, listen listen take take pictures and tweet at us please that's kind of crazy because I'm, I'm trying to screenshot it on my computer but since i'm on like a streaming service yeah. they won't let, it currently says max it. the one to watch yeah i can't show it on screen it's gonna fucking not work because of the yeah. whole blockage they have yeah yeah, nah, that's dope. That's Turn that's really cool. <laughs> that's yeah, but back to what was I saying? Oh yeah, another team I was extremely wrong about. Well, let's talk about it. The Atlanta Hawks. What went wrong? I mean, everything. <laughs> like everything. Where do I even start? Uh, Clint Capella. He's shown clearly that he is past his peak years he still has value but it's in ways that just don't benefit the team as much as we needed you know the defense and how he is offensively and and the decisions that he makes but more importantly than that just the DeJounte Murray and Trey Young pairing um when Trey Young is on the court only him and not DeJounte he has a plus three uh net rating for DeJounte Murray he's plus 0.3 still he's a positive player you know but, you know, when they're together, they're like a minus two or a minus three. They just clearly just do not gel well um, because their play styles are both literally lead ball handlers. And there's not much that they do that makes each other's life easier on offense and fucking defense, which is like a shocker to a lot of Hawks fans entering uh, this DeJounte Murray era dating to back to like last year because that was one of the main selling points. Oh, yeah, have a defensive guard to go ahead and take away all the pressure. And DeJounte is just like he was cooked for a lot of for the majority of the time since he was in Atlanta. So he just had he that went wrong, bro. But, you know, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, I'm mad at myself <laughs> because when this trade happened, I didn't believe in it. What so fucking ever? I made a video. And I immediately was like, why, if you have Trey Young, would you want to pair him with DeJounte Murray? A guard whose best attribute is having the ball in his hands, being an interior scorer and passer. Something that doesn't gel well with playing off ball next to another point guard, on top of him not being the best shooter in the world. None of it made sense. And I was right the first year. And I still fucking gassed at myself coming to this year that they would be better. I don't know if I oh, blame you, reason. if I blame Zach Lowe, if I blame everybody else who told me Quinn Snyder was an amazing coach. Whoever it was, I was influenced, and I was like... They'll figure it out. They have them of talent. They got to be better than they were last year. Quinn Snyder is an offensive genius. He'll get the most out of them. They just were who they were, and I should have stuck to who I originally thought. But side note, I pulled it up. This is from NBA's Twitter. Look at that scoreboard. It's blurry in this, but that's us over there on the wow, scoreboard. Wow, bro. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> no, that's hard. That's hard. Your, your face is currently on the sideline of a 76ers game. How do you feel? That's hard. <laughs> oh my god. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> wow, slow down. Nuts. Let's cut to this. There it is. Look at oh Mo. Oh my god. Nah, that's really cool. Bro. That that's, that's really cool. Crazy. Look at these glorious headphones. Wow, bro. Shit, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That just threw me off my game. That's Shout just... out House of Highlights, man. Yeah, Perfect. exactly, bro. Shout out the Warner Media family. <laughs> or Warner Bros. Discovery, my bad. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Losing track like of I play, like trophies by Drake or something. Did y'all boys not get the memo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, that's hilarious. <laughs> y'all boys not get the memo. Thought I was gonna pop some champagne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, that's hilarious. Oh, One thing that I'll say, I think about the Hawks is like. You were, I don't want to say gaslit in, into them because I did not gaslight you. I just gave you very good reason as to why they, it was fair to go ahead and give them more props than a lot of people wanted to. And one of the main reasons for that was shooting. They did add that. They had a full year or they had an opportunity to have a full year year of Sadiq Bay. 
um, full year of Bogdan Bogdanovich back, and he's been great. No shade to him whatsoever. And on top of that, you know, Jalen Johnson rose, and he just been like an absolute stud. With all those things being said, like you would think that everything went right for this team, fucking completely opposite way. Defense has been still a huge issue, and Quinn Snyder. A lot of people have realized, like, oh shit, is this dude a Rudy Gobert merchant right now? <laughs> <laughs> because the second that he's not around him, it's just like everyone's like, hold on, man, this dude's game plan isn't really that effective whatsoever, and it's the complete opposite of what this team needs, you know? So he's for sure a Rudy yeah. Gobert merchant. That's a perfect way yeah. to say it. And listen, also, Capella's not Rudy Gobert. Also, you weren't gaslit. I. I feel like the Hawks were like the trendy pick, and it was like, it, it was like like the the sleeper that's not a sleeper that everybody yeah. knows about. Everybody was raving about the Hawks because they got an actual coach in, because everybody expected Jalen Johnson to, um, especially you guys, were expecting Jalen Johnson to take a. Oh a yeah, right about that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So you know, shout out to you guys. I I was. I thought that I had a hot take saying, oh, yeah, the Hawks are going to have a top five offense this year. And, and you guys yeah. both looked at me and were like, bro, that's this actually very regular. Like, we kind of yeah. expect them to, to be a high-flying offense like that. There, Like Mo said, there were a lot of reasons to think that they were going to be a good team. Where you guys were wrong and where I was right, though, was y'all had the nerve to put the Atlanta Hawks above the oh New God. York Knicks. And I told y'all from the start that the Knicks were going to be better. And this is – I'm I'm taking a victory lap on this because I have – very little victory laps to take, so so that's that's the only reason why they I'm, traded for OG and Obi. That's that's the only difference there. They were a five seed ass team, but they traded for OG and Obi. That's congrats on thinking they trade for OG and Obi and transform their. They team. were still You're better. I'm gonna give them flowers. I'm gonna back Donovan up. Regard OG and Obi, OG and Obi are not. They're still way better in the. Yeah, but our point was category. not. We didn't give a fuck about Knicks. Or I didn't give a fuck about Knicks versus Hawks. I gave a fuck about Knicks or about a five seed. They're about a five seed, and they were, and then they trade for OG and Obi, and now they're better. Like th- things materially changed. Nah, I told y'all. This I saw was the vision before Donovan, the vision was yeah. even possible. Yeah, this is between me and Donovan. <laughs> we had bread that's, on the that's line. That's next level, no, Nostradamus, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I give that to you. We had bread on the line. Uh, yeah, bro. I just get sad when I think about the Hawks. <laughs> famous, famous double or nothing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're so mad that day. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what else? What else? Yeah, well, what else are we wrong about? Let's see. Wrong oh. about. Oh, let's go, so let's go back to where we're right about. I was right about the Orlando Magic. I predicted them Same. to be. I think I had them as the eight seed, but I was like, don't be surprised if they break into the top six. I was like, they're gonna be very good now. And I also said that people were going to the season were very high on Markel Fultz because he had a strong. Ended last year. He had a good, like, 15 games to finish the season. And I was like, they're going to be good. Don't be surprised if Marco Fultz has nothing to do with that because he's the odd man out there. They had a logjam at guard while needing spacing. And I was like, he does not make sense fitting next to the starting lineup at all. It played out exactly like that. Jalen Suggs has taken a leap, which I don't remember how I felt about Jalen Suggs coming into the season, but I was like, him and Cole Anthony make a lot more sense there instead of Markel Fultz. And that's how it's played out. Paolo and Franz have been as advertised. Wendell Carr Jr. surprisingly hasn't been as good as I thought he'd be. But they've managed to be a great defense despite this weird center rotation. Mm-hmm. They've been everything you could hope they'd be. Yeah, yeah no, they've been uh, – that's something else that I was right about as well. I didn't have – I had them a seed lower than you, Isaac. But one of my biggest victory laps is, like I said, it, crown eaters in the uh, long form or whatever were laughing at me when I said, oh, X-Factor, Jalen sucks, three-point shot. You can say that about, like, 80% of young players in the league, and it's very factual. But yeah. that was one thing that changed so much for this team. But things that I did not like foresee coming were the depth of this team. Uh, Franz Wagner's brother, Mo Wagner, is he is one of the most entertaining bench players, bench centers to watch. One of the best role players in the entire NBA has energy, tenacious. Gogo Gogo Badatse, even though like his name doesn't have much motion at all, but he was truly valuable when someone like Wendell Carter went down you know there's a yeah. reason why no like when the carter goes down yeah like no one really cares no one really sees that value because of guys like that jonathan isaac is jonathan isaac like we all know how much of a monster like defensively he is and this season he's done nothing to but continue to show that and paulo and franz just continue to develop even though like franz hasn't had the season that a lot of people envisioned them having. yeah so, chat what is just- chat what was y'all's best prediction this year let us know all the, the teams that you were really right about or players you're really right about 
Well, another one I was wrong about is Jordan Poole. I thought he'd be solid. I thought he'd repair his reputation oh, and get. Fuck. I thought he'd be a stat pattern, but I thought he'd get buckets. You know, I thought he'd average like twenty-two points per game and like be able to get some value back. Motherfucker, what's I thought he was going to be MIP, man. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, tough times. Tough times. The Jordan Poole. Believer. I told y'all, he was. There was. He was not going to be good on the court if he was <laughs> going to be good in DC. That was not happening. Someone said they're right about yeah. the Nuggets. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, Good job. congratulations, bro. You can't claim me right about the Nuggets or the Celtics. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That... Everybody was. <laughs> Good, job. Good job, buddy. Oh. Yeah. One thing that I was right about also, the uh, Sacramento Kings. They have faced you were. some adversity that I've foreseen, uh, which is like, you know, last year they were the most healthiest teams in the entire NBA. This season they didn't they don't have that I don't want to say luck but they still don't have that durability. Darren Fox had an injury completely like destroyed the trajectory that he was on. Um, Malik Monk as of late got injured as well, and on top of that, like the roster just stayed the exact same, and they just baked in two. They put they invested too much chips into their development of their young core, aka like Keegan Murray. Although he's a great great young player, I'd love to have him on my team. But to have him as like to expect like an all star type of leap from him, you know, is just like a little bit too much. So yeah. Oh, when I was weird. when I was right about it in a very funny way. That's like nothing I want to take victory lap on. It's just hilarious. I said the Pacers are like guaranteed to be the six seed, and they're currently the oh. six seed. I was like, put it in stone. They are the fucking six seed. This is a six seed ass team. They are precisely the six seed, and I imagine they'll finish there. Yeah, you're right, and you know, for all the for all the right reasons. Sadly, obviously, like we believe they would be higher if Tyrese Halliburton never got hurt. They did trade for Pascal Siakam, which none of us foreseen coming, and with him being on the roster, for still for them to still be six seed is like just interesting slightly. But at the end of the day, congratulations, you're right on that. Yeah, <laughs> but on the other side, team. I was I thought the Hornets would be a playing team, and then Lamelo uh, Ball's you, knee fell apart. Terry Rozier got traded. You me to hell. But I still, I still maintain they would have been solid if their team didn't fucking fall apart. Like they, I agree. I, I agree. swore, dude, I was so confident that they would surprise people this year, and every fucking thing went wrong. Nothing went well for this team. They are fucking cursed, and I'm never gonna predict them to be above expectation ever again. That's the only reason why I had the Bulls out of the playoffs because I thought that the Hornets were gonna make a push up. The Hornets and the Magic were two of like the younger teams, but I was like. Listen, watch out for them, right? They're gonna be at the bottom, they're gonna be scrappy, they're gonna be, they're gonna uh, make their way in. And it just it just doesn't just didn't come mm. come. Dude, LaMelo to Ball fruition. misses he's missing the rest of we didn't even talk about it. LaMelo Ball is what everybody thinks Zion is now. He has the same long-term ankle issues that Lonzo Ball was r- crippled by on the Lakers years before his mm. knee issues. But like LaMelo was on serious watch of like what are we gonna what are they gonna do about this guy's long-term health? Because he has had no chance to put together any any time to put together a good stretch of play. He always starts the season slow, ramps back into looking better. This year we had 10 games of him averaging damn near 30 and 10, being incredibly efficient, looking awesome. Immediately gets hurt, has no opportunity to build on that. This is so damaging for the development of a young guard. It's it's hard to main, it's hard to explain just how damaging this could be. Listen, he he, he doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about He's, any of that. He got the bag already. He signed oh a five-year, two hundred sixty million dollar deal last year. The Hornets right now are in the mud. Yeah, this is to to have your future be tied to your number three overall pick to already give him the, the contract and over the last and over the last what three years? I guess the first three years of his career, he has played. He's played 22 games this year and 36 games last year. Oh, my Tough. God. Chad, how much do y'all believe in LaMelo Ball long term? What, what's y'all current viewpoint on the, who LaMelo is going forward? Like, can you, like, safely build around him? Like, we talk a lot about is he good enough to be, like, a top-tier young player? Can he be a best player in the championship team? All this shit. He is that good, I think, or could be. But if he's never going to play half a season, like, at what point does it stop mattering? We need to question LeVar Bone. What the fuck he put in these kids' bloodstream when they were younger, bro? Because this shit is just so sad at this point. Oh, someone Both, said six, man. Get out of here. That's too much too far. <laughs> yeah, that, that is genuine hate right there. That is genuine hate right there, bro. But God I, I, damn. Is it? Is it, is it yes, though? Yes, like, yes. <laughs> how? How is it, how's it genuine hate? Don't forget. Sixth, man. Don't forget. 
Lamelo Ball is gonna be a starter. What do you sixth mean? Sixth man is some like you that you put someone who's a sixth man with his type of cachet. You think it's crazy to say that. That, that his career like, ultimately ends up like that. No, relax. Yeah. relax. Listen, we were saying the same things about Zion last year. He's playing a full season. No, like, come on, relax. All it takes is to get over the issues that are cur- that are recurring. Let's, let's not be ridiculous with it. I I will say in Zion's defense, his issues were more uh, controllable by him than Lamelo's is in terms of like his ankle issues. Like if you have weak ankles, you just you just have weak ankles, right? But like with yeah. Zion. A lot of the stuff was like tied to his weight, tied to his work ethic, or stuff like that. Like that, that was some, that, that was that was some that was some a lot of stuff it was. that we were here. Even yeah. even even just going to like not even aside from like the injury stuff, people were talking about him and like yeah, his but, work ethic or how or how much he was being like all that stuff was coming into play in terms of why people weren't really believing in yeah. Zion like that. Sure, but you say aside from the injury stuff, the injury stuff doesn't really matter. That's why he was missing games because he like I think last year was a hamstring or something like that, or I forget what it was. It's, yeah, it's it was been, like hamstring, knees, hamstring, year. shit like that. That's not because he was heavy. He just had unlucky injuries like a lot of other players do. But listen, Lamella's also had unlucky injuries, but the same recurring injury that might be a pattern, right? We've seen young players in the past that if you have recurring ankle injuries, sometimes it doesn't go away. You know, it's something that kind of follows you for a while. So I can see why that's a little bit more of a pattern than what Zion had going on. I feel so sorry for the Hornets fans because they have to do what I like to call like rebuild your rebuild. But even then, now that I think about it, they really didn't because they had Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier, and the plan was just so, like, sticky and all over the place. It looks like they're, like, 110% committed to the rebuild rather than, like, having one foot in, one foot out. But that's because they didn't really decide to be committed. They literally have to because fucking the middle ball's out. And so at this point, you yeah. just have to be like, oh, let's just trade these old guys and just see what Listen, happens next. They made the play in back-to-back years. And I mean, granted, they got smoked both years because Lamelo had bad games, but but we're not gonna talk about that. Oh but my goodness. besides the point, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, said no, I can't it, watch these Hornets highlights. I'm really making them watch the Poku and Grant Williams show. This is hilarious. I'm torturing y'all. You're hey, welcome. Don't disrespect In- Trey Man. Increase your ball knowledge. <laughs> about Poku, <laughs> Poku versus Luke Cornett minutes. We're fucking here. This is March That's basketball. <laughs> Some sort of, at least the Hornets got the GOAT announcer. Facts. At least they got some entertainment on their side. They also have to watch Miles Bridges and pretend it's okay. So maybe they're not doing so well after all. That's disgusting, bro. Yeah, I feel so <laughs> sorry for the Hornets. Yeah, man. Well, who, who else were you guys right about? Um, well, let let's, take, let's take series victory laps. Uh, who else? Who else? You know, a lot of, we talk about everybody to death so much. I'm like, I'm trying to find ones. A lot of things you're right about, but like, yeah, everybody's right about that. So I'm trying to find ones that were actually different. I think I said the Rockets would be solid. You had the Rockets at 13. Ass. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. I <laughs> will, we I will all say, had the Rockets at, at 13. Yeah. I will say something that I did say before the season. I, I don't know if this is a huge victory lap to take, considering what transpired last minute, a.k.a. Damian Lillard being a Milwaukee Buck, but I th- I thought that the the uh, Boston Celtics were going to be by far in a way the best team in the Eastern Conference record wise, and they have been that because of you know adding Drew Holiday, Chris House, Porzingis, and Tatum being Tatum and all that other shit. But that's like a slight yeah. victory lap towards that. Yeah, every, most people agree with you. I guess I was a little wrong about that. I thought that Damian Lillard and Giannis would really just fucking destroy the league. I thought they were going to be like the best duo in the league, bar none. And it obviously hasn't worked out that way for a variety of issues, Coach, coaching related, Giannis' ability to acquiesce to a star guard related, Damian Lillard's ability to maintain his rhythm while playing next to a big that needs ball in his hands more. All these things have combined to, they haven't been horrible, obviously, the two seed, but they haven't been as good as they should be given that talent and how good it should fit on paper. So definitely I was wrong about that. I, I don't know. I'm not really to write off the fact that I was wrong about them being like, Team to be mm. in the playoff settings. I still think we might see them be really great in the playoff setting, but I was certainly wrong about them in the regular season dominance that I expected. Mm. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, you know oh. why? The big reason is I thought their defense would be a lot better. That's what I was dead wrong about. Now that I'm thinking back to what I was saying, I was so wrong about that. I thought that Damian Lillard wouldn't impact their defense that much. That it would get worse. But I thought it would go from being like top three to like top ten. And I thought that a baseline of having Giannis and Brook Lopez would make your defense have a super high floor that it wouldn't be an issue who's that point guard. 
that's a little bit more true now under Doc Rivers, but under Adrian Griffin, that shit wasn't true at all. They were a fucking tire fire, and they desperately needed Drew Holiday's defensive presence. So that, that's the big part I was wrong as fuck about, because... I mean, I, I don't know. Now under Doc Rivers, I'm a little bit closer to right, but it's still like the 12th best defense in the league instead of like top 10 like I thought it would be. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I guess another thing that we were all right and wrong about, or at least I knew I know I had a very hard stance. You can go back on a little bit. The Dallas Mavericks before the trade, I was so right about them. They had a record of like 29 and 23 which is just six games above 500 or yeah, six games just above 500. And since that I was right about like all my accusations about their trajectory as an organization. But of course, like since then they're, I think they're like 10 games above 500 or something like that or 11. Yeah. And they've been on a tear as of late. They've been on a damn. They're almost bro. Shit. They're like 16 games above 500. That's they've crazy. won seven in a row, bro. They've been amazing. Oh my god! Yeah, sixteen games above five hundred is absolutely nuts. And you know, if I saw this roster coming into the NBA season, then I would have very, I would have had very different expectations for this team. But that's something that I can that I just just chalk up and be like, well, damn, <laughs> I was right and wrong. Oh, another thing I was right about was the Los Angeles Clippers. I was the highest on them, and uh, but this was before the Harden trade. This was before the Harden trade. But I was high on them because Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, how can you go go ahead and go against this man? Whenever people thought about the Clippers at that point in time, Kawhi Leonard at the time just felt like more of an afterthought. No one's thinking of him as like a top 10, 15 player out loud because of just how, man, eh, you have to talk about him. There's guidelines when you talk about him because of the injuries and shit like that. So I guess that's something I could just like wave, wave to as well. Yeah. Everyone's spamming yeah. crayons in the chat. I see y'all. Shout out crayons. Anyways, that's, no, that's no, no. a lot of things we're right and wrong about. For the last 20 minutes or so of the show, let's do some hot takes. We got 820 of y'all in the chat right now. Uh, I'm looking at the analytics. It's a 66 chat rate, so about 60 of y'all are active in the chat. I need all 800 of y'all to spam your best hot takes. We're going to rate them as W or L. We're going to... Listen, you guys typically give us some bullshit, but there's some good ones mixed in. If there's bullshit, we're going to tell you it's bullshit, so let, let us know. Let's do it. While you spamming them comments too, don't forget to spam the likes. We're almost at 600 likes. We oh, should be at 700 likes, bro. Some just reminded me. Another take said also that Steph is better than Luca. Yes, coming to the season, mm. I said that Steph is still better than Luca. Luca, I don't know if I was wrong about that because last year he You're was. You were on the fence, but he passed yeah. him up. He passed him up. Like, yeah, I wouldn't say I was. I, we were wrong because Luca's better. But I think Luca got better this season, and now we all to say that he officially passed up Steph as the best point guard in the league. Yeah, exactly for sure. Uh, no one really wanted to say that at, at, at the start of the season because it's kind of crazy because Steph is Steph. But yeah. with the leaps that Luka's taken all around, bro, it's 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 clear. The vision yeah, is clear. Yeah. We just had <laughs> yeah. to see it, and we saw it, right? So like, I, I didn't want to be the first one to be like, oh, Luka's, Steph's cooked. But it, yeah. it's time. Yeah. I agree. All right, let, me, let me try to do it. The chat is moving. Y'all took that shit to heart. All 800 of y'all are active. Oh, my goodness, Someone's bro. hot take is KD will make an all-defensive team. That's an interesting one. I don't know if he probably he won't because there's only two teams. Does do you think he he's been that caliber defender? Does he deserve it? No. No. He's been not, good. Not, he's been good. He's been good. One of the 15 best defenders in the yeah, league. Maybe not. maybe not. But he's been he's been great defensively and deserves more recognition for that. And I will give it to him. Shout out yeah. to you, Kevin Durant. But the all NBA teams will not be the ones recognizing <laughs> you. All right. Yeah. I'll take. Sorry about that. Uh, Jeff Vandal says, Luca is the best in the league. Listen, we've been talking about this a lot. I think that's a W take. It's not, actually, no. It's not a W take, but it's reasonable. If you, I think we got to view it every year as the best in the league conversation comes down to the top group of guys that are all in the running for it. Right now, Jokic is definitely number one. Luca's in that top tier. That's not a bad take at all. I, I, I can't give this a W or an L for some reason. If I, had to, if I had a gun to my head, maybe I'd just say, oh, because Jokic is Jokic, bro. We're witnessing one of the 15 yeah. best players of all time within your eyes, so let's be fucking real. But at the same time, we're witnessing someone who could be in those conversations, too, in the next few years. And right now, 34, 10, and 9? What the fuck are we talking about right now? Shooting 38% from three on 10 attempts? He might be the best. Yeah. The the winning bias wants me to, to be like, Jokic is in a league of his own. But then you turn on the tape and you watch some of the stuff that Luka Doncic is doing, and you're like, "There's, I don't think that there's anybody else who could do anything that he's doing right now." So yeah. he really might be kind of up there. So yeah, it's it's okay to say. I won't I won't call you stupid if you say that. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't agree, but it's reasonable. Uh, Kevin yeah. Farsi says the Lakers are going to beat the fuck out of OKC in the playoffs. Assuming they play in the first round, do you think OKC will win? Is that a hot take? Well, it is a hot take, but do you think it's crazy? <laughs> to think that, uh, that the Lakers would win? The Lakers will beat OKC in a playoff setting. No, Considering it's not crazy. the seniority, it's going not crazy at all. Yeah, yeah, I've been going back and forth on that to where the the one weakness for Oklahoma City obviously is their size, is the interior, and there's not a lot of people who can exploit that the way that Anthony Davis can. Um, and the way that AD has been playing, this is the version of Anthony Davis that people have been asking for for the last two, three years. All I need is consecutive games from AD, and you got it. Like They can, they can 100% push the thunder and yeah. beat them. W take. Oh, we got a donation. W-take. Listen, I gotta. If people donate with their hot take, I gotta read theirs off. That's how it goes. They pay for the right. Dell sold tip three dollars. His hot take is Bam is a top four center and should be all NBA this year. Is Bam still a top four center? If number one, two, and three is obviously Jokic and Bead AD, is Bam still top four? Has Wimby passed him? Saboner passed him? Saboner. <laughs> Where are you guys going? <laughs> Go Bear? I think that's fine. I'm definitely not. I'm, I'm taking Bam over Rudy for sure. Yeah. yeah. Bam clears for sure because he gets the value on both ends. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's without a I question. I think that's the that's the that's the ranking. It would be for me, Jokic, Embiid, AD, Wemby, Bam, Gobert, Sabonis, Cat. I agree. Precisely. Yeah. Mm. Maybe Jared Allen rounding it out. Yeah. Sounds good. At 9, and then at 10, we can go wherever you want to. But I, I don't really care right now. I'd go Chet, but I digress. Sure. Either, either Those two guys are the next up the line, whatever order you want to put them in. Got to bring the okay. whites off at the end. Ooh. Christian, he has a hot take. He says the Timberwolves will get knocked out in the first round. I don't yeah, think I mean, it's ridiculous to say that. Yeah, they don't I, have Cat now, so it's a little... But then again, they haven't really gotten any worse since adding Cat. So maybe we got to stop falling yeah. on that crutch. They're stepping through over the last 10 games. Nas Reed stepped into the role beautifully. Listen, if the, if the season ended today, they play the Pelicans. Who'd you pick? Ooh, that's so Ooh. hard, bro. That is hard as hell. Oh, my nah, goodness. Nah, it's not. I'm going Timberwolves. I'm going Timberwolves in that one. I think Timberwolves are... Really? Is that easily? Yeah, I think... If you're going to want an answer for Zion, Rudy Gobert is a good place to start. That's tough. That's tough. What I need is I need Dallas to fall to six, and I need Luca to play the Timberwolves so that he could eviscerate them. Because if they play, <laughs> if they up, play, they're beating them in five. Bro, in in the Not seven five. games, they're good. That, they're good. In the they seven are, games, Luca is getting rid of the Timberwolves in five. Clip that chat. Come back to this. Listen, if it happens, if, I wanna, if I wanna they see play, I, they are going to beat them in five. In five, oh my goodness. bro. The Timberwolves deserve respect, bro. They're good. From who? The last. <laughs> no, they're good. They're good. They're good. <laughs> Bro, the last they're good. They're good. nine okay. games or so that, or seven games that Zion Williams and I has played against Rudy Gobert, he averages like twenty nine points and he shoots like seventy percent, sixty five percent from the from the field. Bro, so it's <laughs> like, like I used to go Gobert shut him down, but if you're developing <laughs> a playoff, everything's different from the playoffs and you're really keying in, really making game plan specific purposes. True, Rudy Gobert is a hell of a weapon if you're really locked in on stopping one guy. There's a, and with a smart coach in the playoff setting, there's a lot you can do with Rudy Gobert and Nasrid. I've seen Terrence Mann run Rudy Gobert off the, f- the fucking oh, court. Oh, God. So yeah. Wow. Talk about it, Mo. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. We'll be, we'll be real dumb today. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's, some other let's ones. talk about it. Uh, that's a liability. I've seen LeBron post him up. Yeah. Let's, get, let's, let's keep going. I mean, oh, bro. He can't guard him. Like, what do you pick. want me to say? <laughs> he can't guard LeBron? My bad. <laughs> he can't do it. Someone said Giannis is a top 12 player of all time. Yeah, no, we're good. That's a L take for sure. He's not better than Jokic all time. Ooh. I don't know, they're close. They're close together. He's not better Giannis than won an MVP and defensive player at, in the same damn year. We ain't that seen that right. since, like, Michael Jordan, bro. So people forget right. about that. People definitely nah, I that's, still that's have Jokic. accomplishment. People definitely forget yeah, about that. Yeah, that is insane. We won't see that until... Wemby reaches like 24, 25. Facts. Wemby in 18 months. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was like, wait, no, nah, this motherfucker's in the league. <laughs> Del Sol tipped another $3. She says, hot take. Don will be playing like Prime Mellow and whoop Mo and Isaac's ass straight out of the gym. Oh, my goodness. I, that is like probably the worst take I've heard in TD3 history. Maybe like 
Okay, see Mello. Donovan. Okay, see <laughs> <Mello is> crazy. <laughs> He's taking these to heart. He's putting these down to flash drive in his mind right now. Bulletin board material. <laughs> and I've been doubted for four years. <laughs> So it said, 2019 Kawhi is the most underrated peak of the 2010s. I think it's pretty highly rated. I don't know about underrated. I wouldn't say you can't, underrated at all. You can't rate it. It's hard to rate it and, and do that because it felt like it felt like a one-year peak. Because the next year we go to the bubble and every get, everything gets thrown off and then Kawhi gets hurt a couple of years and yeah. that was that was the first time or not or not the first time but even the year prior to that like he gets hurt in the in the playoffs yeah. like there's a there's a one and a half two year stretch where Kawhi's peak is and we just don't get to see it for a long time because of COVID and injuries yeah well but the COVID year I mean the year after that he was honestly better he was amazing remember that's the year his passing came around he was averaging uh five assists per game previous year then uh, the championship year he only averaged 3.3 assists that was his career high. He had never been a passer at all. He was a black hole. Then the first year at the Clippers, he was having 27.1 points, 4.9 assists, 7.1 rebounds, 37% from three, 47% from the field. He was a fucking maniac in 2020. Like, that is still a peak year, I think. He was, but if you look at these games played, I mean, the year that they won the, the championship, he played six games. And then we go 57-52-52. And he missed an entire year of AC uh, because of the ACL. We have not seen. This is the first time Kawhi's played 68 games this year. This is the first time that we have seen Kawhi play from start to finish a legitimate season and be Kawhi Leonard. And even then, he's averaging 23.7. It's like it's decent, right? It's, it's yeah. good, but it's not obviously peak Kawhi. Yeah, well, that's mostly, you know, James Harden's there. It's a bit different. It's only, he's had even, a few, even, few less shots What were the numbers before that? I mean, but we haven't seen this Kawhi from front to back with the games played in literally seven years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he really has a two-year peak, 2019 and 2020. And I guess if we go to 2017, the year before the injury, we'll throw that in there too. He was pretty amazing that year. Really a three-year peak. Yeah. And I guess we can count 2021. He started in 24.8 before that was or before 2015, the... 2016? We'll, we'll, go, we'll start 2015, 2016 because he was second in MVP voting in that year. Yeah, Damn. it wasn't, it wasn't really a scoring peak, though. Only 21 points per game. Second in MVP is still ridiculous, though. Okay, well, yeah, we'll start, we'll start MVP that. before your peak starts is fucking crazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> On a rookie that, contract? <laughs> How do you make sense of that, bro? <laughs> I don't even know, bro. That's crazy. All right, next hot take. Let me try to scroll this down. I got uh, one. You got Vile one? says, hot take, Dallas is the biggest threat to Denver. W take. Well, in in the in the West, obviously the Celtics are the Celtics. Yeah. In the West, I, I can I can see that. It's a W. Is there no other team that you, that you think gives them real issues, or you can thunder. foresee like a real upset happening? Oh, the thunder. Oh, oh, really? Real upset? No, 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 no. The thunder don't give an upset, but real trouble where it's gonna be a hard fought series. Yeah, but I think mm. the Nuggets win that most times. Yeah, if you go into like playoff mode, you need to have a guy that can go nuclear, and you need to be able. to especially like once you start going further and further, you need to be able to say, we have the best player on the floor too. And yeah, Dallas right now is in, in the West is one of the, is honestly the only team that can look Jokic in the eye and say, yeah, I like I'm, I'm on your level. I can make things happen as well. So W take. I agree with that. The, right, the next take. one. Uh, <laughs> people are laughing at your love for Trace Jackson Davis. Someone's a hot take. He's even hey. better than Mo thinks. Yeah, very next game, right after that pod, too, he dropped 18 on the fucking Orlando Magic, and he was the main reason why they one of the main reasons why they won. <laughs> Every time you pull out a stat line, it's always just like a good game, but nothing insane. <laughs> I thought it's you a to great say game. You wanted to make him a bench warmer. What do you mean? That's a great game, bro. I thought you were about to say fucking, he came out and dropped 32. <laughs> you know, like, he had 18 against an elite defense. Yeah, we like, take swell. all victories here, bro. He could put up 10, and I'm still running around this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamar Cudd just donated one dollar. Without Jamal Murray, Lakers stand a chance against the Nuggets the way they've been playing. Well, I Duh. mean they have Jamal, they have Jamal Murray, so <laughs> sure. Yeah, if, if there was no Jamal Murray, you'd be right. Uh, personally, Pesson says Giannis is still the best player in the world. Honestly, boo! I 
It's not crazy. Oh, we definitely weird. we've taken we're at the point where we're taking Giannis for granted for sure. I understand Jokic has the crown because he just won the champ title, one of the best offensive players we've ever seen. For being real, Giannis is still just neck and neck, just as good as him. Obviously, I understand the difference of Jokic and how he's legitimately one of the best offensive players ever. Giannis is having a ridiculous year, bro. He is v- so taken for granted. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't like the way he worded that, framed that. Neck and neck is like, ah, eh, I wouldn't say neck and neck because so there's certain neck things. Neck, I don't think it's neck and neck. I think it's it's too much neck talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped myself. I'm just like, hey, what's up with all this neck in the chat, man? Damn, <laughs> bro, he's he's a 61 percent field goal percentage this year. Good for him. That's nuts. I think that's the most efficient 30 point per game score in NBA history. If you it know. has to be, like, that's fucking ridiculous. Yes. I mean, I'm, oh, what is Shaq average at his prime? I mean, obviously, Shaq I just think Wilt is. is there. For sure, Wilt is there. I think he probably like put up like fifty one percent or something like that. I think he is. Giannis is by far and away. Damn. Two thousand Shaq had fifty seven percent from the field. Damn. Are you joking? I mean, let me go. You pull up cleaning the glass. What is Giannis shooting yeah, at no. the rim right now? I I gotta know because probably like eighty percent, bro. That's absurd. Eighty percent off of all like strictly self created off the dribble shots attacking from the perimeter, not just post ups. He's at seventy eight percent at the rim right now. That's crazy as hell. Oh, my God. Listen, tonight against the Wizards, Giannis had 35 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists. He's a goon. In a loss. <laughs> they lost or the Maybe Wizards? it is neck and neck. They lost 117-113. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, God. This is why he can't win fucking MVP. <laughs> you can't be doing that, God damn it. Oh, my Joel God. Joel B finished with 24 points. Or is the game over? I can't tell. Yeah, yes, it just ended. Joel B finished with 27 points, four assists. He won. Uh, what, what one rebound? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong person. Seven assists, yeah, six rebounds. Six, yeah, 24, six, six, six turnovers, seven, a little yeah, bit of rust. He's, he heated up field. towards the end because I think during the third quarter or something like that, he, he was just at like 16 and they were like down by like 15 or so. He got his 12 free throws, naturally. Four fouls on Chad Holmgren, naturally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, bro. Yeah, where he left off. I think that's the end of the stream, y'all. I think that's the end of the hot takes we got for y'all. Anything y'all want to say before we get out of here? Donovan, what's happening tomorrow? Aren't you dropping, like, a banger? Oh, yeah. I am dropping a banger. I am. Listen, we've been working on some stuff in the cut. Tomorrow, my first video on my personal channel will go up. I don't have a premiere time, but be on the lookout for it because it's going up tomorrow. <laughs> Finally, we're getting the solo Don Yap session. <laughs> be, on, be on the lookout for it. Every single eater watching the stream right now, right, you better right. tune in, in, tap, tap in, in tomorrow. In. Show that you are in attendance. See you there tomorrow. Or I won't Let's be go. there, but I'll be in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> New era, T3 content, Don Solo content.